Good evening, everyone. Todd Warner and Special K Keith Green with you tonight from Penns Valley. Our great friend Steve the Bear Miller could not be with us tonight. And Maverick, Doug Maverick Dyke, the BEAAD, is not with us tonight either. It is a rare Thursday night. Forget the NFL game on Amazon, whatever college games are on ESPN. The most important football game in all of central Pennsylvania is tonight in Spring Mills just off of Route 45. Keith, Bald Eagle and Penns Valley have met 34 times previously. They play for the Iron Bell. Throw that out. This one's not for the Bell. This one is bigger than, bigger than the Bell. This one's for the trip to Mansion Park to the PIAA Sweet 16 in the district championship game next week. You got it. Yeah, I mean, just like you said, it's it's an even bigger game this week. Um, and this is for a trip to Mansion Park, a trip to, you know, play for some higher stakes next week. And to keep your season alive, to keep playing football. Um, you know, I got to talk with some of the players on the Bald Eagle side and asked them what their kind of approach was coming into this one. And they said that, you know, they learned from mistakes against this team last time. And, um, you know, they're going to come in. They're going to execute their plays, and they're going to do exactly that. They're going to try to execute, going to try to make the right calls on offense and defense, and, you know, every now and again make something special happen, and that's what they predict for this game. Well, Keith, that's a great point. <clears throat> you and I did that game here in week four. Bald Eagle came into that game one and two. Penns Valley at the time was three and oh, mm -hmm. and um, the Eagles knocked them off. But that was a, a really odd game in a way. It was, a, it was back and forth, yet BEA had a 20-7 to 7 lead at halftime. In the third quarter, for about seven minutes, it looked like Penns Valley was going to run the Eagles the whole way back up through center hall and send them home with a loss. Penns Valley scored three touchdowns in a span of about seven minutes, and, and the Eagles ended up twice in, the, in a frantic final ten minutes or so having to come from behind. Mm -hmm. Big play after another. Finally, um, one big, big catch and uh, run by catch a pass I'm sorry a pass from Carson Nagel to Elliott Splain and then Trey the blur green took over and just ran ran wild here a couple of big long touchdown runs where he ran over people and then broke away and ultimately a game that was a one-point game going back and forth Bald Eagle pulled away and won 42 to 27 when we left that night we said <clears throat> a couple things Penns Valley was the best offensive team we'd seen to that point in the young season and as far as Bald Eagle opponents go, I think now that we're seven weeks beyond that, we still agree that that's the case. They're very good. Yeah, I mean, I've been saying it all week. It's very tough to beat a good team twice. I mean, you, you know that Penn's is going to be coming into this one hyped up, ready to go. They know exactly, um, you know, they have a good feel of what the Eagles are going to want to run. They're going to want to come out and uh, and do certain things. And Penn's Valley knows from their last loss what the Eagles are going to possibly come out in here. And, I mean, it's it's a big game on both sides. I'm sure both these teams are psyched and, and ready to go. It's, But it's anyone's best guess who's going to come out on top in this one. And like you said, late in the last game, uh, Green kind of combination of Nagel and Green really put the nail in the coffin there. And one pass and two big runs. Exactly, And, 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 yeah. that, and that was it. Yeah, um, he had a, uh, a really big night that night. I don't exactly remember how many um, – carries he had but had a monster almost 100, 200 yards rushing 180 yards rushing yeah on very minimal carries right well he had two carries that he, he took more than 65 yards he ran over a couple of guys and then he ran away from the rest of them yeah and you know Keith we talked <clears throat> this is for a trip to the district finals Penns Valley has only ever been to the district finals once in history I was ironically I'm a bald eagle guy but I was at that game in 1991 a Saturday morning kickoff 1991, the Rams are trying to get to a district title game for the first time in 31 years. They dropped that game 23 to six to Forest Hills. In the in the crazy world of high school football, the guy who quarterbacked Forest Hills that day is the current head coach at Richland, and he, if the Rams win tonight, they may they're and they may have a very good chance to face that same nemesis 31 years later as a head coach. Bald Eagle is three and two all time in uh, district title games. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a long drought. We, we won a 1988 district title. We had a couple very good teams in 92 and 93 that lost to Lock Haven in district title games. And then, you know, this, this recent era, the Eagles, the Eagles have won a bunch of postseason games in recent years. 
the noise you hear and the cowbells, you know, they have a lot of cowbells in Grange Fair country. The Rams are taking the field. And um, we're, we're in, the, in the press box behind the great folks from Penns Valley. The hospitality has been wonderful over here. But BEA trying to get back to a district title game for the sixth time in school history, but the third time in five years. That would yeah. be quite an accomplishment. Yeah, I mean, it's, like you said, the Eagles had that long drought, and that long drought was due to a lot of good teams in the Mountain League. I mean, you had that dominant uh, Tyrone run for a while. Uh, a couple other teams sprouted up here and there. Yeah, then Central, and, and, and exactly, our, and our yes. enrollment was different. We played, but some of those teams you mentioned are one class bigger than Bald Eagle now as far as enrollment goes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's, like you said, there was a, a drought there for a while, but we've had a really good streak of, um, you know, getting to the postseason now, and these guys want to prove themselves. They want to prove that. How do they how do they stand up against those teams of the past? How, you know, how do they rank up in the Eagle history? Well, great a great segue, Keith. Here's, here's the deal. As you know, this is the 70th, 70th year of Bald Eagle football. Last week, when we won our sixth game in a row, our seventh in eight weeks, we um, we we got to the eight win mark on the season, right? So we're eight and three coming in here tonight, when we beat Bellwood. That was the that mark now the fourteenth time in seventy years that Bald Eagles won eight games or more. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it's high school football yeah. in rural PA. Now, when you get to the ninth win, we've only ever had nine seasons in history where the Eagles ended up with nine wins, and 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 they're. For in Eagle football lore, they're pretty simple. 1967, 76, 79, 81. We had those those four in a in a pretty good span of uh, you know about 14 years, many years ago. So yes. long ago, Keith, that I was on the the third and fourth of those teams that, that won nine games. Now then we had a 1985 team um, that had a, had went undefeated in the regular season. They had a tie. They played in the first ever postseason game for Bald Eagle. Um, they lost in Mansion Park to Holidaysburg. Yes. But the 1988 team won a district title. They, they won 11 games. And then from 1988, you have to go clear to 2018. You go 30 years before the Eagles would win nine games again. We, we won at least nine games in 2018, 19, and then last year, very quietly, we, we went one and one in the playoffs, but we won nine games last year. Yeah. Yeah, I mean... Again, just Eagles have been on a really good streak here recently. Uh, Penns Valley kind of took a dive in the past couple of years, but they're on a resurgence now. They're kind of building back um, to where they used to be. Um, but again, just two really evenly matched teams here. If you look at the stats, they are so evenly matched. Bald Eagles passing is a little bit better than Penns Valley's. Penns Valley's running is a little bit better than Bald Eagles. It's just going to be a great matchup to see how these teams can deal with each other now meeting each other second for the second time this season. I, you, you sound fired up, and I thought the Bald Eagle <laughs> players were fired up at the Veterans Day assembly today. Keith, you got a message here. The, uh, the chief executive officer from the Chaos Bear Crew says that our lens is uh, our lens needs cleared up, so okay. we may need to get a. We we thank you and and of course, somebody who belongs to the Chaos Bear Crew would know all about having scopes <laughs> that are clean and clear. So bear with us a minute. We're going to use the old tossel hat expeditionary <laughs> contingency method. We can see the spots on the lens. Keep in mind, this is not our home setup. It's not our home camera. It's it's the iPad. Um, and, and we're doing our best with it. Keith, you're on the call. The, the Eagles will have Cale Burns and Gavin Eckley both back inside their 10, awaiting, awaiting Ty Watson's kick. And Watson's a marvelous athlete. We talked about him. We'll talk more about him. And it's a deep kick. And I think Gavin grabbed that ball. Yep. Picked up beneath the five. He's going to find some space on the far side of the field. He'll be brought down. And they're going to mark him before the 30-yard line there. Pretty good run back, though, Keith. He took it, took it, uh, ran a long way with that ball, but he got over behind the wall. Not too bad a field position. We're going to get set up on the 26. Uh, let's say we'll give him 18 on the return. I think he grabbed that about the 8-yard line. Yeah, I mean, pretty standard field position here, but, you know, you're not looking for too much here. You're looking to get your offense going, looking to start something up here. Nagel and... Dubs in the backfield, sends Dubs in motion, pass tipped, 
almost picked it off that time. I believe that was number 52. So the Rams, uh, the first defensive play, the Rams bat down the, the, the little pass, flare pass attempt out of the backfield. Carson tried to hit Cameron as he, as he came in motion and turned up field. And that has been a an uh, increasingly uh, increasing uh, occurrence in these games here. Obviously, Carson Nagel, an undersized quarterback, and he's got a lot of Rams coming at him now. Tries to get rid of the ball, and that one will land incomplete. Just managed to get the ball out. That brings up third and ten for the Eagles. Third and ten. Penns Valley has a lot of emotion at home. Thursday night football, we're only 17 seconds in. The Eagles have a third and 10 at their own 26. Again, Eagles trying to go open backfield, uh, empty backfield here. The Rams have a lot of guys up in the box here. Keith. Yeah, five front for the Rams. Double twins for the Eagles with a tight end. Takes a snap, looking to throw. And that one gets batted down. So and Penn's Valley, be Penn's Valley bringing eight and nine guys there, overloading. So the yeah. Eagles are going to have uh, have their hands full tonight, Keith. It looks like it here early anyway. Well, again, we're only 20 seconds in. And that's been the key against the Eagles uh, late here in the season. Be aggressive on defense. Send a lot of guys into the box and make that O-line deal with it. And that's exactly what Penn's Valley yeah, they call, here early. They called a good a good defensive package to start Chase's punt. Uh, away bounces and, and rolls past Miles Brooks. It continues to roll, and Penn's Valley is going to start on their own 29-yard line. Not, not much different from the Eagles starting on their own 26. A really nice punt. Um, a very nice punt by Chase Thompson. Let me see. 20, 24, 45 yarder with no return. So an excellent quarterback, Jackson Romig. We saw him, Keith, and he, he was the best, he's a junior, and he was the best opposing quarterback we saw, we've seen in the 11 weeks of watching Bald Eagle football every week. And uh, who's he got back there with him? Is that Ty Watson, 21? I believe so. He's got a trio to the right here, to the near side of the field. Sends a man in motion, sending him farther out. Takes the snap, looking to throw. Throw into the, the flat. And he's going to get about two yards on that, maybe to the 31, and a host, a host of Eagles. And I think Trey, Trey Green, so and gonna, Trey wrapped, Trey Trey wrapped him up. Nate Fry was in on that. Trey wrapped him up, knocked him down after a short gain. So Penns Valley will have a second and eight at their own 31. And after that first offensive possession that the Eagles had, it didn't go so well. Keith, the key is. Being keeping your composure and yeah. uh, and trying to stick with it. Don't get run out early. Roaming has a lot of time, and the, and the time faded. Now he throws a huge tackle. A, was that uh, Trey? Yeah, so tackled by Green that time. He, and it's going to be a third and five here for the Rams. So the spotter had Caden McCullough. Folks, we apologize. Keith and I didn't design these Bald Eagle Road jerseys. <laughs> but um and, and we've we've been spoiled by having five straight games in Wingate where we wore the navy blue with the, the yeah. vivid white jerseys. Uh Penns Valley with a third and six. A big play early in the game, Keith. Their own thirty three, third and six. Roman keeper. Option play. He got a first down, a nice run. They sent Keith, they sent Watson to the right, and Romig kept the ball, and somebody sealed that, that far side for the Rams um, very effectively, and Penns Valley's going to keep the ball. They're going to move the sticks. Uh, they've, they've picked up 13 yards so far on three plays. Two short passes, right? And, yeah, two uh, short and then passes, that run. and then that run. So good uh, mix. Combined it for the first down. It's going to be a battle of defenses here early on. Well, the Eagle defense is going to have to step up. Brooks is in motion. There's a heavy rush. No hold. Really, really good. Was that, was that Caden? Who's in coverage over there? 
Again, the uh, numbers a little hard to we see on that uh, on that one. Too far from my eyes. Might have been my might have Mikey Snyder. I think that's a 32. But uh, again, our coyote hunting <laughs> spotter with the super binoculars is is working tonight. He's not with us. It's third. It's second and ten. Nine twenty-four to go in a scoreless first quarter. Penns Valley at their own 42. Handoff. Watson, right? And he's going to be brought down it? before getting back to the line. Really good defensive effort there. You might even um, lose a yard on that play. That's going to bring up third and Nate ten Fry, now. Cam, Cam uh, Watkins came clear across the field and got him around the waist there. Yeah, that's something they've been focusing on is trying to get those DNs to contain. And that's been a big part of, that's been a big weakness, I mean, in, the, in their defense thus far. The, uh, the ends get too far downfield and take themselves out of the play. But they've been doing uh, good with it here so far. So the Cowboys' wife says that the camera quality is decent. It's good enough. And <laughs> she's watching from Hublersburg Mountain right now. And uh, she says the audio is clear. So we'll listen at that. Another third and long for Penns Valley. They converted the last one, Keith. And this is a big play for the Eagle defense. Somebody's going to call a timeout. Coach Tobias, yeah, he's the Rams avoiding. use their first timeout with 8.27 to go in a scoreless first quarter. Yeah, Keith, Bald Eagle, three and out on their first possession and just got swallowed up like they weren't ready. That hopefully will change, and we've seen that. It's it's a lot of a lot of nerves, a lot of pressure. Yeah, I mean, very interesting for the Eagles to come out in an empty backfield there, just something that's not been working for them. A whole bunch this season. Last game they came, they came here and won. They really killed them on the ground. Uh, you'd expect them to come out and try that kind of play first, but going, going to the air all three times uh, on that first drive just didn't work out for them. Keith, do we have any slight zoom capability on that camera? Yeah, we do a little bit. Yeah, we'll see if that makes it clear or not. That's about it. Again, the folks are chiming in. We like, we like the comments. We're we're calling the game. Our, our cameraman, we're not allowed to, to identify who our camera operator is tonight. Um, but I will say it's a last-minute fill-in. Our planned cameraman um, encountered Steve Miller's famous rut and hit a deer about an hour before kickoff. So um, our planned cameraman's not here. Uh, a kind, bald eagle person came out of the stands and is operating the camera for the first time here for us. Romig hit as he throws, and that pass is it. It's incomplete. Mikey Snyder, the senior ball hawk, he's picked a bunch of them off this year, Keith, and he almost had another one. But yeah, he was trying to say he snagged that with one hand, and from this angle, it, it almost looked like he did, but it rolled uh, incomplete that the time. The official had a pretty good view of that. I, yeah. We were looking like right down under it. I couldn't tell, but he made another a valiant effort. And uh, I think... Jackson Romig does just kind of like Ty Watson does a lot of stuff for them. So they like the camera now. So whatever our our camera operator has done is good. Who's going to grab that one? So not much room to run that. He came upfield. Gavin Eckley grabbed that ball at about the 20. Tiptoed out of bounds at the... That's a 26-yard line. Same there. place they, they've been on the 26 the whole game, Keith. <laughs> yeah, we'll That's see. That's where they, they started. They've had they've had a couple possessions there. Um, they got Green in there now in the backfield. Different, still different double backfield. twins here for the Eagles, and you'd expect the Rams to still stay with that five front, and they do. Well, They're and they got a lot of guys up tight and close. But yeah, Trey's first time Trey's been in the backfield. Second possession for the Eagles. Yep, no safeties back here. Hand off to Green. Trying to make his way forward. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. He'll be brought down for second down. All right. So it could be a battle of attrition here tonight, Keith. The Eagles still looking for their first offensive yard. They've, they've uh, this will be their fifth offensive play. And they're taking a lot more time. They, they talked about being patient early yeah. in this game. And they, we may be seeing that in the offense here. Throw out into the flat. Makes a man miss. He'll be brought down from behind. 
at the line of scrimmage. Third. Who no, he gets who, two yards. Who was the time. receiver, Keith? Cam Watkins. Yeah. So we get some help from the PA announcer here. I think they must have somebody with better binoculars than we have. <laughs> so about a, ga a gain of about a yard. It's third and nine for the Eagles as we approach the seven-minute mark of the first quarter. So the game's not very old. The Eagles have one yard. Penns Valley has one first down, and each team has punted once. Eagles bringing in a tight end. Passing over the top, wide open, caught on the sideline, brought down at the Rams' 35-yard line. That's number two. That's Kale, number two. Kale Burns hauled that in, and he, let's see how long that was, Keith. The ball was on the 30, 31. Kale got behind him, and uh, that might open things up a little bit there. That was a doozy. Um, they got the Eagles have a first down just that quick on the Penns Valley. 35-yard line, so 15 plus, what are we going to say that was, Keith, a 34-yarder, 30, <laughs> I guess. Was it on a 31? Yeah, and we saw exactly what happened. Eagles got good pass blocking that time, gave, uh, gave Nagel time to throw, and that's the result. They're going to send the heat this time. Hand, up, off, hand, uh, hand off up the middle to Green. He's going to lose a yard on the play. Second yep. down. Keith, I'm okay with that, though, because sooner or later, sooner or later, you know, you, if you get another pass, you do something, open stuff up. And this Penns Valley defense is tough and physical. I mean, those, those guys up front. Yeah, and they're sending both of those linebackers a lot. Well, they're fearless. That's uh Throw! Wide open again! Diving catch, no. and they're going to say no. That got away from him. Yep, that one bounced. <laughs> Just barely overthrown. Nagel was trying to deal with some heat there in the pocket. That, 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 that was a nice pass. Five fifty-four left to go here in the first quarter. Yeah. That was Micah Good. Micah Good had nice coverage on... on uh, as a defensive back there for the Rams. It's third and 12. Big play for the Eagles, and depending on what they get or don't get on this, that'll depend. That'll decide what we do in fourth down, I think. Green still in the game. Sidecar and Nagel. Snap. Looking for a throw, and he's going to be brought down behind the 50-yard line. A so what's huge the, what's loss. What's the flag Eagles. on? Did Bald Eagle move early? Did they hold? 27 Let's see what we got here. I keep second guessing myself. I want to say Carson Wentz instead of Carson Nagel. <laughs> well, okay, an illegal what shift. So Penns Valley, obviously, with that big sack, they'll decline that. So the ball's at midfield. And, um, there's 5.48 to go in the first quarter. We're scoreless. Chase Thompson, we said special teams special teams could determine an awful lot tonight, Keith. So we need, the Eagles need a good snap here. I think, uh, is that Ty Watson back deep for the Rams? 21. Another flag. And I think Preston Reed Preston maybe. Preston Reed wanted to get the jump on that one. Well, he got the jump, and we're going to back up five yards, I think, five yards more, and we're going to try that punt all over. Again, our buddy Steve Miller not here tonight. Maverick Dyke's not here. It's playoff football in Penns Valley. He's looking at the ball this time. Punt. Good high kick. Oh, that's Miles Brooks back deep. And that one's going to take a sideways roll and go out of bounds about to 25. So Trey and blow for blow here. A great defensive battle early in this one. 522 left to go in the first. Nothing for either side. Yeah, this is, uh, we'll see. This is Penns Valley's second possession. Bald Eagles. Second possession went a little better than its first. The big play, the big Carson Nagel to, to Kale Burns uh, yeah, I mean, pass completion was, was the big play that kind of flipped the field position here. So Penns Valley's first possession started under 29. This one starts under 25. Romig back throws and uh, Trey, Trey had him today. I guess 
uh, Ty wasn't, Watson kept his balance. Yeah, wasn't able to hold on to the jersey that time. He was coming so fast. Yeah, from Trey, the Trey the had him. He pulled loose, and Chase Thompson ended up with the tackle. And You know, Chase, Chase's grandparents, uh, a shout-out to them. They're probably 130, 140 miles from here in Westmoreland County watching this as his grandfather is recovering from, from surgery, and they're, they're great fans. Um, they've been great fans since the, the Thompson family uh, moved to Bald Eagle a number of years ago. Second and six, Brooks is in motion. And you're going to see a lot of uh, off-tackle runs here for Penns Valley. They're going to go away from the center of the field. Green, obviously the leading tackler for the Eagles. Passing situation. Caught! No! He dropped it. It was in his face mask and couldn't manage to pull it down. Cameron? Yeah, that was Cam Doug, or yeah, that was uh, Cameron, Cameron Watkins, Watkins on the other side Cam of the field. Cam Watkins there. almost had a walk-in pick six. Um, oh my goodness! <laughs> so another a third and long now for Penns Valley. They converted a third and six on their first drive of the game, their first possession. They got a first down, and that's where the drive stalled though on their on the next set of downs. So right now. Two old rivals. The 35th meeting ever between Penns Valley and Bald Eagle, and it's the biggest one ever, Keith. Yep. And like I was saying, they're going to try to go away from the center of the field, offsides that time on Penns Valley. Well, I, they're Green pointing at Bald Eagle, but the Rams had a couple guys moving, so I don't, I don't know. We'll see how they sort this out. The flag I, I is thought on maybe, the Rams' thought, side of the ball here. Yeah. They're going to try to – I think they're trying to say that uh, – they're trying to. So it is on Penns Valley, right? He's heading that way. Yeah. Yeah, they had. Ball start call against the Rams. Five yard penalty. Repeat so down. now it's third and 11 for Penns Valley. And that so dangerous, dangerous that uh, Danny Kerstetter, we saw him in that, in that game in week four, too. And he was a factor in that game along with Miles Brooks and Ty Watson. What was third and manageable is now third and long here for the Rams. They're going to go four wide. Uh, quarterback in the shotgun with a sidecar to his left. Sends him out to the flat. He's got room to run. A helmet comes off. The, hel the helmet comes off. That was a very well-designed play. John Meyer got the Rams out of a big hole, and he got the Rams into Bald Eagle territory. So first uh, down for Penns Valley. On the next snap, we will be likely under four minutes to go in a scoreless first quarter. But Penns Valley on a big, with a big play of their own there. Um, that blocking on the outside was what opened things had, up for him. Well, they had third and 11, Keith, and they picked up 27 on that. And he did a great job. He caught that ball, and he just turned it on. He accelerated. I thought for just a second there, they, the Rams might be on their way to a touchdown. It was close to looking that way. It's a game of Four inches. Wide. The Eagles missed a pick six. Side. And then the Rams get that big play. And they didn't miss a pick six there. They're going to bring him back the whole way to about the 32-yard line is where they're going to mark him. That was Cam Watkins. Back, number 19, yeah, Watkins. I guess Cam wasn't happy about that pick six that, that slipped out of his hands there a moment ago. Um, so they're going yeah, they, to mark him at the 45. Yeah, the Rams got a got a pretty nice spot there. I we'll go back and look uh, at the yeah. I mean, we'll I don't go back think and look any... at the tape on that. I didn't even think he made contact with him. Do he was at about the 42? I didn't think there was any. We have it on progress. the camera. We'll know. If Steve was here, he would tell you exactly where, <laughs> where that ball should be at right now. It's second down and 16. Penns Valley's done well on, on down and long distance so tonight, Keith. Same formation that the Eagles have been primarily using throughout the season here. Three wide for him. Back to throw. Throws over the middle. Caught over the middle. And he's down. Hunter Lyons, that's another one of those Rams that two-sport athlete, a good wrestler for Coach Brinker, and he made a great catch over over the, probably the premier linebacker in the – the tray was back there with him, wasn't he? Uh, I think I, that was – no, I think that was uh, – Was it Mike Snyder? I don't know who was on coverage. No, I think I it was Thompson, he, I believe. Okay, I – you know, these jerseys. Yeah, it's hard I to, don't know. It's hard to say. He I went can, up I've over the top. I've complained about them all year. 
the Penns Valley with 12 on that, another first down, or actually 18 on that, and Romick's still running, and he gets another first down. And the blocking of the Rams is what's leading yeah. to this drive here. Yeah, it is. You keep an eye on that, Keith. You got, you got Land in Landon Hess and Scott Hess. A couple of Hesses ran, shoved the Eagles right down the field there on that play. And Romy got uh, 10 more and another first down. I'm assuming the Hesses are brothers. That would make sense to me. You have a sophomore and a senior, and um, those guys unloaded on the right side of the line there, Penns Valley at the Eagle 27. Yeah, and it's, it's been working for them so far, that uh, that angle blocking where they sweep those line those linemen out to the uh, to the outside and allow the running back to find a gap in all that chaos that's going on and the, the it's a good play scheme from uh, Penns Valley here what the Eagles uh, defensive line likes to do is push those guys back into the lap of the quarterback and by running the ball to the outside you're really forcing them to create separation and get off of those guys. Yeah, and they, now they have a second and five at the Bald Eagle 22. And Romig has had time. Almost picked off by the Eagles. Almost. Pass defense number 28, Miles Brooks, incomplete. Who'd we Pass have on? Number 22, Kyler no, that was Mikey Snyder. See, this this poor guy can't, can't see the numbers either. <laughs> he, we're counting on the PA announcer. Mikey Snyder got back on that play and prevented the touchdown. Um, and again, a ball hawk. He just missed barely, narrowly missed an interception on, on uh, the first Penns Valley possession. Yeah, very dangerous, though. He got a lot of separation yeah, he did. from that wide receiver, which is dangerous if you misjudge that ball by just a little bit. That's a touchdown. Minute 13 to go in a scoreless first quarter. Romy going to keep her in a big hole. The Eagles ran past that. And the Penns Valley's going to get a first down. Again, a great surge, a great line blocking. Penns Valley's Gavin Ryan. Gavin Ryan and Hunter Stake. That whole crew up front. That whole bunch of them. Ryland Loner and the two Hesses. The Rams mean business tonight. And um, it is... First and goal at the Eagle 8, and we have 45 seconds and counting. The game's still scoreless. We're in the first quarter. And, and you said, Keith, very difficult to beat a really good team twice, and Penns Valley is, as we've known all year, is a really good team. Romig give to Ty Watson. Number 21, Ty Watson, the ball carrier. What did he get, Keith, about three? I didn't see where they marked him down. They marked him right at the five-yard line there. So he did get three. So we'll see if there's another play in this quarter. The Rams are in the huddle, and we're when we have about 10 seconds left in the first quarter. I think that's going to probably do it for the first quarter. We're going to switch to the other end of the field, the scoreboard end. A scoreless first quarter. Penns Valley has had a more impressive first quarter than Bald Eagle, but so far no points for either team on the board. Yeah, real tough game from both sides here so far. And it's so far it seems like the Fred of the Eagles is gonna really lie on this rely on this O line here. Can they deal with this attack uh, when they're on offense? And we've been praising them all season long. They've been getting better game by game by game. Can they get to that next level? Can they be not just regular season good? Can they be playoff good? Can they be district championship good? Well, the next three quarters here will tell us a lot more about that. And the you, you mentioned the Eagle O-line. They need to maybe make some adjustments. The Eagle defensive side of the ball, the Eagles have been burned on several big plays when they had Penns Valley in third and long situations. And and um, part of that, you know, is Romig, Romig made a really nice throw. Not a, not a long throw but a nice throw, and John Meyer had the big run, the 27-yard gain. Romig had a couple of big runs. Penns Valley's converted. I don't know how many. We don't have a statistician with us tonight, but I've looked at third and six. I've looked at third and 11 twice, and the next play they had a first down. Yeah, if I you mean, do that, if you do that, you're focused, and um, it's Thursday night football. It's the, the winner of this game, as we keep saying, will, 
will go to the District 6 AA Finals next Friday night, according to the district website in Altoona. And that's also the PIAA Sweet 16. Yes. So next week there will be 16 teams in the entire state um, still in contention for a AA state title. Roaming looking at okay, the screen. No, it's a Over delay. the middle. Caught. Touchdown. Yeah. We saw that coming. And Hunter Lyons. Hunter Lyons. Um, he's hurt the Eagles three times already tonight, Keith. And we're one play into the second quarter. Penns Valley leads six to nothing. And, and Steve would already be looking and saying, you know, we gotta, we gotta weather the storm here pretty strongly because Penns Valley, Steve would already be looking at Penns Valley kicked off to start the game. Steve's already thinking in his mind, it's in a high school game, what's gonna happen with the first possession of the second half, even though that was the first possession. And there's Ty Watson with a booming extra point. If the kick is good. And now the Eagles, their focus should be um, trying to get a quick hitter either in the flat or send a guy deep on the sideline like they have been doing um, out of that three wide package that they have here. I mean, if they can get a guy open like they did before, if they have a, a receiver that they like in in a uh, in a matchup that think they think he can get open, target him, go to him, try to score quickly, and make this Rams offense do exactly what they just did, march it down the field against you. Force him to march it, I agree. Um, we talked about special teams. This, this kickoff here is another one, very big early in this game special teams moment. Do the Rams get a great kick and great coverage? Do the Eagles maybe get a, a bigger than normal play on special teams here? I'm not saying break one, but do they get an opportunity here to maybe get a shorter field, get after yeah. the 40 or to midfield? We're going to find out here in a second. Kale and Gavin are going back deep. We're four seconds into the second quarter. Uh, a really nice delay and throw off to the left by Jackson Romig to Hunter Lyons gave Penns Valley a 7 nothing lead. Yeah, I mean, running that uh, man uh, defense in the in the red zone is so hard. Even It's even harder when you're in a goal line package because you have to follow that guy the entire way across the field. And if he has you beat by, on speed at least a little bit, that throw can get in there. Yeah. The Bald Eagle defensive line, though, Keith, as you were saying, they, they ended up back on their heels after that possession, a bouncing kick. I think Gavin grabbed that one about to 15. And again... He's going to go down around the 30-yard line. Good field position for the Eagles. Well, that's the best starting field position I think we've had, right? Yeah. By a little bit. So now let's see what the Eagle offense can do. I mean, a good, a good possession, a good field position, a score would be great, but just... Um, not putting the defense back on the field right away is a key here, Keith. Yep, they're going to stay in that package. They got three wide with a tight end and green in the backfield. Green has been uh, the more dominant uh, running back here for the Eagles for a long time, and they've been trying to limit his uh, his play time a little bit during the regular season, so that way they could save him for moments like this. Thrown! Perfectly thrown! Caught! On the sideline, and he's going to go down just well, after hitting the 25-yard line. They're going to mark him on the Rams' 23-yard so line. A huge throw. So Cam Watkins hauled that thing in. That was a 40. That's a 45-yard gain. And just that quick, just that quick, they will make it a 46-yarder. That ball was right on the money, and you said time. Penns Valley didn't have a rush share. Exactly. And he just unloaded and laid it right on the money. Big league exactly. style throw. There's six up front for the Eagles now, and they have green back there blocking. They can weather the storm a little bit longer. He's, He's gonna going to send it to the sideline again. Overthrows for Elliott Splane Splane on the sideline, and that's the weakness in this defense. They're playing cover one. Those sidelines are going to be open all night long. So you heard it here, my. You're the play-by-play -play guy, and you're my <laughs> analyst, Keith. We're. Uh, we got a glimmer here, though. We got and uh, we flipped the field position. Now let's flip it in and, and try to tie this football game up. Eleven nineteen to go in the half. Clock is stopped. Ball legal is second and ten at the Penns Valley twenty-five. Again, Splain one on one here. Thrown to the sideline. Caught. Touchdown, Eagles. There's a thump above, and who who caught that? Kale Burns. Pass complete. 
for the Baldy Valeria touchdown. They didn't say who because, yeah, he can't see the numbers. And I'm, 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 I, I don't like those jerseys. I love Bald Eagle football. I don't like those jerseys. Kale hauled that in. It is just that quick 7-6. to six. That drive didn't take very long, and now Kale's going to be the holder. And this football game has two excellent place kickers. We've seen Ty Watson. We know about him, and we know about this guy, Caden Burns. We need a good snap, a good hold, and a good kick. We need to tie it. Stay right with him, even the score up. It looked good. Kick is up, kick it is, is down, good. and it is through the upright. It is 7-7. Seven seven. And just that quick, the quick strike Eagles. And now that now let's see if, the, if that does anything to motivate the Eagle defense, Keith. Keep in mind that Penns Valley scoring drive happened after the Eagles dropped a pick six. Exactly. You know, yeah, that, that, mean, that's a that's a that's a, a, a point taken. I, we, I mean, that drive happened despite a lot of big plays from the Eagles. They had them in third and long, third and long twice, and they, they, they had the dropped another pick and then, six, exactly. big sack, and then they gained twenty-seven yards. But Penns Valley, what we say in a regular season, under Coach Tobias, you will not find a team that fights harder and longer in any class of football, single yes. A through six A in District Six, and 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 evidence of that. The game that, and we weren't even playing in it, but the game that cost Bald Eagle a Mountain League title was Penns Valley's come from behind win against Tyrone. On their homecoming night. Yeah. Oh, you mean on Penns Valley's yes, homecoming on Penn's night. Valley's homecoming yeah, night. Yeah, Tyrone and had a tough time with homecomings this year because yeah. Bald Eagle went to Tyrone and, and um, ruined Tyrone's homecoming. Tyrone came here to ruin Penns Valley's, and all the Rams did was pound them in the second half and, and so up the second seed. That's why we're playing here tonight um, yeah, and I, instead of over in Wingate. I heard from some students at CPI prior to that game happening, we have a big board where we decide, uh, we try to guess who's going to win that weekend and we have a uh yeah and i had voted for tyrone because i needed tyrone to win for the eagles to be tried so that, champions in the mountain so the League. guy who designed the jerseys wants us to quit complaining about the jerseys okay. well we can give you that time and down a distance i do that all night i do that in wrestling season so and, and they don't have down a distance in time but it's tough to not know until the pa announcer knows and he's called a couple wrong so we will quit complaining about the jerseys. Bald Eagles wearing white, and Keith called them the team in white every time we've been on the road. <laughs> Here we go. The the Rams, the Rams um, will start on the forty. That was an interesting choice of a kickoff, Keith. Yeah, a little squib kick there. I mean, it uh, gives he, it gives a team that had a good good last possession a fairly short field, but we'll see. See what the Eagles can do here. Double twins. No, they're going to go three wide with the tight so end. You, and you got Watson back there with Romig again. Yep, and I think that's going to be a three front here for the Eagles. They're expecting pass, and it is going to be pass. And he caught, caught on the sideline. Did he line. catch that football? He made a really nice and catch. They're going to say that's complete. Yeah, it's going to be first Ty down. Watson. A dangerous Ty throw Watson. into traffic on the far side of the field. So the baseball coach and the Mav are watching this. And on this camera, uh, this superb camera work, they can tell every jersey number. Okay. So it's good that you That's and I good, don't yeah. know. We just keep calling it like we're calling it. But I could tell the, the Penns Valley kid, kid was clearly 21 there, Ty Watson. He caught that ball for a 13-yard gain it, with about three eagles around him. And it was uh, a good one on the BEA sideline. Penns Valley in business, first and 10 at the Bald Eagle, 47. There's a give to Watson. And he, yeah, that's where he's dangerous. He squirts loose. Yes, he's the Eagles had him five and he, or six uh, that time. Yeah, they had him for no gain, Keith. Yeah, looked like no gain. He spun loose. Um, he spun loose earlier. That's that wrestling skill like, again. I mean, I mean, I mentioned that. I mean, yeah. he's, he very, he very well could be Penns Valley's first state champion in 60 years this year. Cowboy and I thought he might have won it last year, and he's only a junior. But on that, on that earlier play down here to our left. When Penns Valley was going the other way, Trey had him. Yeah. He shook loose, and, and Chase Thompson, you know, and he did another thing. He did that low squat, kept his balance, and kept going. It's, it's second and four for the Rams. Romig, is he keeping the ball? And he's running right around the right end, and he's loose, and I don't know that they won't and get him. And he's not going to be 
drug down from behind, but he's going to make it into the end zone first. A 41 yard touchdown, Penn a 41 yard touchdown run. So all that defense in the first quarter is going to rye. And I didn't think, I don't think Bald Eagle wants to get into a shootout with the Rams. Um, that's not the intent. So we're a minute and 57 seconds into the second quarter, and Penns Valley and Bald Eagle have now accounted for three touchdowns in a minute 57. Keith. Number 21, Watson, to the extra point. So the guy who caught the pass and then had the run on the two plays, the two consecutive plays before that really, really nice Jackson Romig run around the right end, and then he just turned it on. And. I don't know who was in the in the back there, but almost had a, was there in time to block it. Scoreline 14 to 7 with 10:03 left to go in the half. And Penns Valley with a quick hitter here to put them up by a touchdown. So we'll see what the Eagles can do on this return. It was a squib kick last time from the Rams. I will say this. You know, I'm getting all kinds of comments about the jerseys, and I'm not, and, and most of them are, are coming our way, Keith. And I'm seeing that, and I, I don't want to talk about the jerseys, but there is a, a gentleman sitting beside me here in the booth who is evaluating this officiating crew. And this officiating crew, in my view, has done a great job so far, and I'm sure they probably will the rest of the game. They're, they're a Huntington crew. And he told me before the game that this PIAA state official told me before the game that either next year or the following year there's a different criteria for jerseys for white and and the and the view on the numbers and um i appreciated him telling me that so i understand a number of teams will be having redesigned jerseys next year for the road so we'll now we'll quit talking about that but when people were picking on me keith and i haven't been here for two weeks on veterans day of all yeah. on veterans day weekend um, it's time to fight back, and right now the Eagles need to fight back. Or is Watson kicking this one deep? No, nope. a short pooch, and it's a problem. It's a live ball, and Penns Valley, out of Penns, Valley out of Penns Valley had That's an opportunity to grab that going. ball, and they batted it out of bounds. And um, the Rams, the Rams right now, Keith, are simply more alert than yeah. Bald Eagle in this football game. Yeah, well, I mean, I don't. I wasn't sure anybody realized that Romig had. The, the Penns Valley kid batted it. Hit, yeah, it, it didn't hit a Bald Eagle kid at all. I think they're talking about where it should go out. I didn't see it touch a Bald Eagle kid. When I thought the Penns Valley cover guy was going to try to grab it. Well, it might have tapped off a Bald Eagle helmet there. I'm not entirely sure, but he was doing the right... He had the right idea. He was going in for the hit to hit that first guy, so his teammates could come in behind him. But he ended so up. So they'll have a they'll have, Bald Eagles going. Now they're going to talk about this some more. We think we have a first. We know we have the ball. We think it's a first down at the thirty, which is where that last drive started, right, Keith? And it yes. and it opened up right off the bat with a forty-five yard Carson to Cameron bomb, and um, a couple plays later we had a smaller bomb, but a Carson to Kale yeah. touchdown pass. Cam, Cam down the left side line, Carson or uh, Kale down the right side line. The Eagles have to answer because Penns Valley wasted no time in answering, and you know Penns Valley had that short field. Keith. I sent a man in motion, and that's Explain. gonna even wide open over the middle, and no one in front of him. He's gonna run the twenty to the ten touchdown Eagles. One play drive to tie up the game. Cam Watkins is having a fine game. Um, 70 yards on that, right down the middle. And suddenly, suddenly we now have uh, in two minutes and seven seconds, Keith. In two minutes and seven seconds, each team has scored two touchdowns. And now these special teams that we talked about, every extra point. If we're going to end up in a basketball game here that ends up 40-something <laughs> or 50-something to something, one extra point, one bobbled snap, anything could make a difference. Kale going to hold for his brother, Caden. Who's the long snapper, Braden Dubs? I think. Yes, I believe so. Well, yeah, I thought that's who, who had the duties here earlier in the year. Good snap and kick a is up, kick is good down, solid and line drive it kick, and it's good. good, and it is tied again. Now this time, Keith, last time we scored, we answered and we scored, and we kicked off deliberately to the 40-yard line. 
Where do we kick off to this time? I think you just keep sending them deep, try to put them in the in uh, deep in their own territory, and again, make them drive uh, the ball down the field. Had they started in, uh, you know, de a little bit deeper field position, that long run, he might have been dragged down maybe at the five or eight, sure. somewhere around, because he got dra drugged down at the goal line, you right. know what I mean? So Or they may not, their, their whole offensive play calling might have been, been different. Might have been different, exactly. So I, uh, yeah, I'm with you there, and we know this kid has a big leg. We've... I mean, one game he had three touchbacks. Yeah. So I I don't know. We'll see. They see something, though, and they give some kind of a six-zone sign. That's what, what they told me when Carter Steer was a kicker. So that I guess that's to, that was to confuse Steve and Maverick and me. I don't know. I always but, wanted uh, to be a, a kicker, but they never let me. And then I ended up going to college and playing club soccer. So, But, um, <laughs> yeah, well... <laughs> You know, Keith, and what a what a what a great great weather. You know, everybody involved. I know District Six was involved. I'm sure Doug Maverick Dyke and and Nate Althouse were heavily involved, as well as the administration. A lot of games move from tomorrow night to tonight. Um, it, as it turns out, right now, regardless of how this football game ends, the field's beautiful. It's real grass. Football probably should be played on real grass, but. I love the turf field at Bald yeah. Eagle. <laughs> Caden tees it and kicks it, and it's a yeah. deeper this time, and that's a live ball, and that one is going to go out of bounds. Yep. And see, there we, we – I think the intent there was to hustle down there and try to grab yeah. it in that zone, and um, our timing's just off. But Penns Valley, where will they start to 35? So – Here, Keith. Uh, the and, and folks, this isn't this isn't Warner talking. This will be Keith reading. Um, again, the state PIAA state official interpreter is sitting four feet from me. He just handed me a rule book and pointed to section five on page nineteen of rule one point something. Keith, call this play, and then you can get to reading whatever whatever's in that. I can't see through my glasses, and you have younger eyes. <laughs> Who's back there with Jackson Romick? Actually, getting is a play call from the sideline here. Oh yeah, it is Watson. Romy throw throws out to the flat. He's wide got open. Miles had to have his legs taken out from under him. And Aaron Eagle, Gavin Eckley lost his helmet. And uh, Brooks, a nice catch on kind of a, a modified slant. I thought the official signaled first down. I thought he had a first down. And they're gonna, they got a one on the stick. They're gonna move the sticks. The nose of the football is touching the white line. Okay, Keith, what do you so, say? Through the 2023 season, the numbers are either going to have to, the continuous colors are either going to have to be in contact, in contrast with the jersey, or they're going to have to have a, uh, a border of at least a quarter inch with, with the jersey as that one's batted down. So who was on coverage here? 21? Was that Caden? That was another Burns. That was Gavin Burns. Oh, that was 17. Okay. So Gavin Burns. Gavin Burns. Well, thanks, Keith. And thank you, sir, for sharing that. And uh, he showed me, um, while we have a little break in the action here, this gentleman showed me the roughly 15-page evaluation that he has to do on every official. Everything. And you... you can't imagine what goes into that. I, I was astounded. From their pregame activities to how they clear the field, there's tipped. a tipped pass, and oh my. Almost caught. Oh my. And that's exactly why you do the tip drill there. And there, and he, and he just handed the book back to you, Keith, to talk about paragraph six. And So, um, in effective in 2024, the entire body of the number shall be a single solid color that clearly contrasts with the body of the jersey. Okay. Well, that solves that. Thank so, yeah. you, sir. So next year, it'll have to be at least a quarter-inch border, and the following year, it'll have to be... Like that goal would be a navy blue. Exactly. Yep. Next year, it'll have to be well, that's right. that's, all and one that's exactly solid right. color for the numbers in contrast with the jersey. So, Rome throw. Brooks throws. Another nice catch and a ram on the loose. They're good. They'll run. They'll run hard. Ty Watts. Is that Ty? No, that's uh, John Meyer, I think. Is that 20? And these, these 20, plays John Meyer. 
these players are directly influenced by the blocking of the wide receivers. Yeah, they're doing. Is there a flag? Penns Valley's walking back. So hold everything. Whoa, Nelly, as old <laughs> Keith Jackson used to say. 9.13 to go in the half. 9.13 to go. We don't know what down and distance was. Penns Valley had a big play there, but the Rams got flagged for something. We'll see what the call is and what the new down and distance is. 14-14. The Rams get caught holding. I don't have any idea who was holding there, but... Yeah, so it was on I, the far side, most likely... Were they trying to grab? Did they grab a hold of Cam or Alex Lefebvre? I believe I, it was on Lefebvre if it was on that far yeah, side. Yeah, we, we haven't called his name a lot tonight, and we've called it all year, so that's suspicious. Now, is it? It's third and 16, Keith. So here's a chance in this back and forth you score, we score, you score, we score. Here's another long down and distance situation for the Eagle defense to rise to the occasion stop the big play, and get the ball back with the game tied. And there's a draw. Oh, my. Woo! A huge hit over the middle. Yeah. Ty Watson bounced up. He got about four on that, but Penns Valley's going to have fourth and about 12. Trey Green, yeah. That, there's no – and Alex Lefebvre on there, and then Trey head on. Those guys – you can kind of tell who it is, Keith. Like yeah, I said, I mean, that you, is a you, bad you combo. You see the motion, we, and that's that's what it is. Like you said, we, we talk about Green all the time, but we don't talk about Lefebvre too much. We haven't said his name all that much. He is a real uh, good kid, and he will absolutely fight for you on the football field. He's like a Bronco. you got to rein him in sometimes. But when he's going, when he's running, he is to be feared. A little punt here from the Rams. That, and that's and Dangerous high punt that went out of bounds. Yep, that's Let's see where bounds. that's marked out. Right. I mean, it, it hit a guy on the side. Okay, he's still moving up the sideline. Now, Steve would dispute that <laughs> by about, <laughs> he would have that somewhere between four and six yards short. Yeah. And, and, and you know, I've seen him be right a lot, but we have 8.01, 8.01 to go in the half. It is 14-14, all the scoring in the first two minutes and seven seconds of the second quarter, and the Eagles have a first down on their own 34. They're driving left to right. They're facing the Penns Valley High School. He's got to get rid of it. Carson had time. Now he's out of time. He's on the run. He throws hard, and that ball is incomplete and a low throw attempt to Kale Burns. Just missed. Kale got, got a little bit open there. Carson had to run a long way, and that would have been a first down. That ball went incomplete in front of the Penns Valley bench about the 47-yard line. 7.52 to go in the, in the half. It's 14-14. The Eagles back in the gun. That's Trey back there with Carson Keith. And, uh, if they're back in that trusty look that they're in, those DBs are off of the receivers now. Yeah. Uh -huh. Hand off to Green. Up the middle, and, that's, and he'll that's, gain about five on the play. Yeah, that's the first time he's had like a first, a little bit of a seam there to get through, and, and there you get, you know, like you said, four or five yards. That would have been a nice first down play, Keith. So it's going to be set third and six for the Eagles at their own 38. We're under seven and a half minutes to go in a tie ball game. Seven and a half minutes, that is, in the first half. And if you're the Eagles right now, you don't move out of the set. It's been working for you so far. Throw it to the sideline. Caught. No. Batted out of bounds. Yeah, great attempt. Kill Burns again. So Burns had two hands on that ball. That kid. And it just gets batted out. 17, 17's had a good first half as a DB. Mike a good um, against some really quality bald eagle receivers. So. The Eagles will be in punt formation. So now after both teams had that score, you score, we score. The Eagles, Penns Valley punted. Now the Eagles are going to punt it back. Chase has had a good year. We need a good snap. We need a flawless special teams night here in Penns Valley. If we intend to move on to the sixth district title game in Bald Eagle history. The Rams are trying to get there for the second time and the first time in 31 years. A low kick. He had a rush here. And that... That's a, certainly a returnable ball, and and Miles Brooks the got the corner, got the wall, and he got upended. Um, he tried to hurdle the player there. Um, luckily, he was diving at his at his ankles there, but I mean that could have very well been a flag on that Gavin, play. Gavin Eckley, uh, 
makes the, the stop. Penns Valley, good field position. They're going to be driving right to left as we look at it. 7.06 to go in the half. It's still 14-14. Romig and Ty Watson set up in the backfield. John Meyer, who's been a problem for the Eagles tonight, out wide right. Look at the throw. Romig, the long Does. pass to Brooks. Knocked out. And that was... And I believe that was Eckley there. Yeah. Yeah. Gavin Eckley. Two and stars on the field. And he's been <laughs> getting beat there uh, on that first step. Well, you know, Brooks is a but senior. Gavin Eckley, as, I, as we pointed out last week, Keith, was up on the varsity as a ninth grader back in 2019. The team that won 11 games that went to the state Final Four. He's the only Bald Eagle football player in history in 70 years to be part of 30 varsity wins. The only one. So he's been around a while and he's done a lot of things. And he's staying with Brooks as Brooks goes in motion. And now Romig takes a snap. And he's he's going to be brought down behind the line. And see the difference there. This time, Keith, the, the, the offensive line of the Rams, it's done a nice job. Four of them were standing there, not in contact with anybody. When they're not in contact with anybody, that opens the door for Big Eric Clark to step in there and wrap their quarterback up for no gain. Yeah. Six and a half to go in the second quarter. Penns Valley with a third and ten. Here's another one of those long... The Eagles better watch for Kerstetter here. And that determining factor on that play was the contain that the end held there forced uh -uh. him back towards the center of the play, and that Ty was Watson, what led him to attack. Cut, and he's going to get loose. Another third down conversion for another the Rams. Another third and ten, and Ty Watson, who's very smooth and very good, picked up about 12. Trey Green made the tackle. And again, the Eagles are about a step behind tonight overall defensively, Keith, and it's really hurt them. I don't know how many third and more than six or more yard plays they've given up first downs or big plays on, but it's been a bunch. And again, they're running those off, those all those plays off tackle or to the outside sweep, uh, trying to stay away from the middle there. But I mean, and we've, this, we've seen it all season. Green is. Probably one of the few linebackers in the Mountain League that can really, truly play sideline to sideline. When Romig is out there looking. Overthrew his man. Had a lot of pressure yeah. coming his way from Cam Watkins. Cam Watkins' pressure may have prevented that the timing on that from being a touchdown pass. And Keith, in week four, they ran something similar to that. And, and um, Watson was even more wide open in about the same part of the field. And he caught the ball and, and walked in. Very similar play. Um, we have five minutes and 35 seconds to go. It's second and 10. This is a huge possession, especially for the Bald Eagle defense, a huge Penns Valley possession because we're late enough in the quarter now that we can be concerned about who gets the ball first in the second half, Keith. And, and the Eagles use their first timeout, so each time uh, each. Each team has used a timeout. We've had wonderful sponsors all year. Keith, I don't know. They're, we don't have our normal setup. So if you want to go through some of those, and right there is the top one on the list, and I have their headgear up here. <laughs> um, and the uh, the sponsors for tonight are Mountaintop Powder Coating, the Eagle Towing and Recovery, the BEA Athletic Booster Club, Brian and Stacey Burns family, John and Casey Dubbs family, Stephen Carey Thompson family, Robert and Kathy Thompson, Ron Bracken, Erica Milliron, Ernest and Tita Green family, the Wolf family, David and Melissa Urbanic family, Matt Katina and Alex Posney, Tom and Virginia Latterman, Mark and Denise Laskovansky family, Jim, Ann and Justin Taylor, Todd and Jennifer Hosman family, Anonymous Superfans, Nola Wright, Molly and Ron Hoover, Ter Terry and Judy Dorman, uh, Ronald and Diana Bell, uh, anonymous BEA alumni. The Chaos Bear crew. I have Mark hat. and Amy Brooks family, Gloria Chambers, the Lewis family of Howard, Bob and Teresa Peters, Ron and Janice Markle. And then we have a big list. Parsons. You can start start with them and then that group on the next the next reading, Keith. Okay. We'll just that's good. We'll just mark them. We know where we're at there. Yep. We'll come back through. A big second and ten for the Rams. And a delay give to Watson, and he runs hard. I think Trey Trey was in on the tackle. I'm hearing a whistle late there. What what's going on? A little bit of 
chit chat between two of the players down there. So there's no gain on that. A good surge. Trey Trey made a nice tackle there. Um, the, I don't understand the clock stopped. Why is the clock stopped? Equipment in, or now now oh, they still running. just well it, it was stopped and now they when they turned it on they wiped out like ten seconds so it had a <laughs> delay. It had five thirty one then I looked and it had five nineteen. I wasn't away twelve seconds. Sending a man in motion. Romig, a lot of time. We got to close that gap on him. Another nice catch. And there, this Miles is great Brooks. play calling here from well, the Rams. Well, it is, it's, and it's tremendous execution, Keith. Yeah, I mean, they're running good plays too. They're getting the ball out of his hands quick, and he's hitting targets well. So, Penns Valley, I said, this is a huge. Probably a bigger possession as far as the Eagle defense is concerned than, than the Penns Valley offense. The Rams looking to take the lead in the in the final four minutes or so of the half. Sending a man in motion. And now Penns Valley Penn's calls a timeout. Time out Their second one. That, uh, Keith, go head back to right here. Yep. Uh, and, uh, Bob and Teresa Peters, Ron and Janice Markle, Parsons Tree Service LLC, Dale and Penny Burkett, the Lady Eagle Soccer Booster Club, the Bauer family, uh, in memory of George Jury, class of 1962, Jeff and Lisa Miles, Jason and Lori Hall, Bombarder Repair Garage, D and K Wetzler Funeral Home and Cremation Service. B and K excavating uh, from Bob and Kurt Hall, Herb and Marion Reed, uh, the Spackman family, Mike and Dottie Havovic family, Robin Shaw, Phoenix Re Rehabilitation and Health Services Incorporated, and the BEA Boys Soccer Booster Club. Thank you for all the sponsors of Eagle Ambassadors. So we have a report. And, and if, as Eagle fans, it won't won't really matter to us if we don't win tonight. But um, this guy is saying that in in the other game, the game that they say is the the game for the with the two best teams, and we will debate that in District Six. Bishop Guilfoyle has a 15-8 lead in the second quarter on undefeated Richland right now. Romig looking again, Kerstetter. And running no right flag with on him. Play. So who's running with him? Is that twenty? Is that twenty-one or thirty-two? What number? Yeah, some fans not happy that the uh, uh, pass interference wasn't called there on the Eagles. Second down and 10 for Penns Valley. They're at the Eagle 31. They've repeatedly converted on third and long tonight. 4.17 to go in the second quarter. And the Eagles. Incomplete. <laughs> it's ja Jackson Romig is. Is I I'm going to say no no disrespect to two other pretty good quarterbacks we saw this year. This is Bald Eagles' 12th football game of the year. He's he's the best opposing quarterback we've seen. Yeah, I mean he puts the ball in the money. He runs, and, he, and he takes it when he takes off and runs. He runs. So exactly. I mean, and he also, you know, they run a lot of designed quarterback runs for him too, which is always a plus. And he's going to be here next year, Keith. He's a, he's a ele he's number 11 and he's in 11th grade. Look to the flat. Yeah, and that's a problem. They just accelerate. They get another first down on a third and ten. On a third and ten, they pick up about eleven. They have first down here. And right now they have more emotion and more energy on the field. I mean that, that, that's that's pretty simple. But we're in a tie ball game. They had third and ten at the Eagle 31, and they got eleven. And that was Miles Brooks, right? Yes. So they've had, the, they've run different things to, to him, to Meyer, to Watson. Every time. They, on, and to Hunter Lyons. They have a lot of weapons. And they're running the same style of play every time they get in those third and long situations. They're sending that outside guy. There's a reverse and a, and a throwback. 
and wide open. Bald Eagle, Bald Eagle not ready for that. The Eagles are gonna have to fight back. Yeah, that was, Romig gave the ball to Watson. He gave it to Kerstetter. Kerstetter hit Romig wide open, wide open, very well designed, excellent, excellent high school play. The Rams go back up <laughs> 20 to 14. BEA has not led in this game. Yeah, a little Philly special there from the Rams. I like to see it. So 20 to 14 here. They try to tack on an extra one. I know this is Steeler country, but we still call that the Philly special. So the Eagles got a little bit of a head start. Now that'll that'll move it up. Is Penns Valley going to go for two? They might. No, they just declined that. They're going to stick with their kicking game. They have, obviously, he's an outstanding kicker. If they don't want anything to change on this. Although a two-point conversion, if you get it, would be <laughs> monstrous right now, Keith. That one up, Ty down, Watson and good. Another one. 21 to 14. Rams ahead. 3.24 to go until halftime. Penns Valley fired up, looking good. They travel well. They're, they, I mean, like all, all school, good bald eagle crowd over there, a big, loud, happy, right now, happy Penns Valley crowd. Again, it has been 31 years since the Penns Valley Rams played for a district title. And that game was a Saturday morning kickoff. That Penns Valley team had a perfect regular season that year, Keith. They had a power back named Zettel. I worked with Brad Zettel. I worked with his grandma in a factory at the time all those years ago. They had big Shannon Manning, our buddy, mm -hmm. who was a ferocious player. And um, they, had a, they had a big coach named Flickinger that had a great big beard, a <laughs> tough hunting camp. He, he was the kind of guy that would have wore one of these Chaos Bear Crew camo ball caps, I'm sure. But uh, I rooted hard for Penns Valley that day. My wife and I went to that game at Mansion Park and uh, Brandon Bailey, the current Richland head coach, was Forest Hills' all-state quarterback that year. Uh, they beat the Rams 23 to six, but it was anybody's ball game until about the last nine minutes. Now, wouldn't it be ironic if Penns Valley wins this game, they go back to Mansion Park to play for a district title for the first time in 31 years, and if they face Richland, they face the guy that, that as a quarterback, beat them 31 years ago, and there's a dangerous kick. Somebody from Bald Eagle hauled that in well, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he said, no, 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 I ain't, I ain't dropping on that. I want to take it in. That's a big guy's dream well, right well, there. Well, I'm glad. Score. And they, they, they kicked it to the H-back tight end, Wyatt Spackman. That was a perfect guy to kick it to. He's got good hands. He hauled that in. And the Eagles now, with 321 to go in the half, trail by a touchdown and will start at their own 46-yard line. So what are you going to do here? What are you going to do here, Keith? Do a little couple well, we'll runs? Let's we'll see what they come out in here. They're going to go with the forefront, it looks like. So the run game should be going here for the Eagles. That would Trey set up with Carson the in the look. backfield. Again, they're going to go a four wide here. Sending it to Green in the flat. Uh, the flat and going to be gone. But I mean, I just don't understand going out of that set that you have and going four wide and forcing uh, Nagel to pass against you know another rusher. I mean, they they sent five on that play. We've seen how difficult it's been for this O-line to deal with five guys up front. It's kind of, at times tonight, at times tonight it's been a little bit like the Bald Eagle Montoursville game, Keith. Yeah, and now they're going to go with an empty backfield. Well, that's so in, they're going to... That's interesting. Test these guys here. A forefront, and looks like they're going to probably send five, and they do. Uh -huh. now. Passing... Just barely dropped Meyer, off the tip. Meyer and Good both nearly had an interception. And Elliot Splain then, as he was on the ground, see that that play has worked um, this year a couple of times. I'm not sure who's hobbling off. Is that Trey hobbling off the field? Not sure who that is. No, it wouldn't have been Trey. They went empty backfield. So it would have been one of the receivers. 
And they got Green in the in the play now. And they're going to go with three wide again. And we'll so see big, what they do a here. A big third and ten here. Penns Valley's converted these all night. The Eagles have struggled with them. We have three minutes to go in the in the half. They're going to go with six here. A little bit of a floating Pass. type snap and a low throw. Was and low and Bold Eagles. Fourth down now Bold for Eagles. Eagles out of sync. I mean, I just don't understand. I don't, I don't get that call. You come out and pass and pass. Well, I'm not. I'm not going to fault the call. I just think the uh, the timing's been off. That the play that the play that has worked well this year. They tried some trickery of their own with Mikey Snyder throwing the ball, and the lateral got away from him. The timing was off here, and that last play, the snap was off. The snap was up up above shoulder pad level. Chase gets a good kickoff, or the Eagles going to cover it well. Brooks grabbed that with room to run, and now he's got a lot of room coming this way. A lot of room. I thought we had a hold of a jersey, but we didn't get the call. So he's Chase get Thompson, back to the punter, who's also an excellent defensive back, Chase Thompson, made the tackle. But Penns Valley now could really, really go for the big one, Keith. Yeah, we'll 247 to go in the half. And if you're playing DB, you got to get the jump on these uh, passes out into the flat. It's what's been killing them all game. They line up uh, three, four guys on the near side of the field. They send the outside guy in behind the rest of the, uh, um, the wide receivers. And instead of taking it back outside, he breaks it up the middle, and there's no one there to cover it. They're going to send a guy in motion. They're going to throw. He has a lot Into of time. The flat and again, drops. goes through Kerstetter's hands. Caden McCullough and Alex Lefebvre were the two closest Eagles to that. 2.43 to go. That only took four seconds. And again, yeah. Penns Valley has one timeout left in the half here, and BEA has two. And they've been playing man all night here. Uh, in terms of defensively for the Eagles. I mean, if that guy takes that step back, you have to step up and cover that. And the problem is that the Eagles have been a little bit too far off of these off of these guys to really get to that ball in time, especially when they're thrown towards the short side of the field. Jackson Romick, that had run written all over it, and he's going to get – he stepped out of bounds. Let's see where they mark him. Well, he, he got some yardage out there. He got about three. By Eric Clark forced a lot of pressure on him, got him to the sidelines, but that stops the clock. 2.36 to go, and here they are again, Keith. Penns Valley on their own 45, and they've been very comfortable and comfortable tonight on third and long. It's third and seven. And if you're in these third down situations for the Eagles, you have to capitalize here. You have to you stop. just went three and out, and you need to do the same to this offense. Because this... This Ram offense gets the ball first to start the and second We'll see half. what they run here. Romig's going to do the same thing, Get look for a seam, get another first down. Let's Third and seven, he gets this eight. This be close. Penns Valley will keep the clock moving. We're a little bit flat-footed, Keith. Yeah, we'll see where they mark it here. Could be close. Oh, they say fourth down. I thought he got the first so down. So it is fourth and one, and it's going to be on the far side of the field here. Well, they're going to go for that, or they're going to measure it. Wyatt Spackman made the tackle for Bald Eagle on that play, but again, um, well, I don't think there's any doubt they're going to go for it if it's not a first down. So the Eagles better get set here and not jump, not do. Although I, I don't, I think Penns Valley is very confident. And what there they, they got going here. You have to execute well here well, on and defense. And Romig's in the gun. The Eagles. Now he's coming up under center. There it is. So now, Keith, the question is, we have two minutes to go. Can the Eagles keep them off the board here? Third and long, third and long, third and long. That's been the story of the night. No doubt. A lot of opportunities. I mean, it's going to be tough here. It's a tough play call. 
again, they're going to go three. They're going to trips to the uh, short side of the field here. I'd be wary of a, another short pass. That one's tipped. tipped. Intercepted, Intercepted by the Eagles. A knee goes down at the 40-yard line, and that's where the Eagles will start their drive. They grabbed that. Yep. Nathaniel Fry with a minute 36 to go. And that's a that's a huge play because huge play. So I think this is I think this is the situation where you stay in that same package, go three wide, and then you run the ball the first down to keep the defense off balance. Well I'm I'm okay uh, with that expecting call. you to pass in this situation. I think if you get a strong run and maybe you get a first down, maybe you get seven, eight yards, you still have a two timeouts to burn. Yeah, I mean, and you're looking good at that point. We just need to execute and not make a mistake here with a minute and a half to go in the half. Because it hasn't been the Eagles' best half of the year, that's for sure. They're going to go, they're going to send probably six, maybe seven here. Green with a run. That's a nice run. And he'll work his way A bruising run up. where he got about eight or nine yards. The clock's going to keep running. 128 and counting. And Trey, Trey got about nine on that. So I'm going to say that he, he did get nine. It's second and one for the Eagles at the at the BEA 48. We have a minute 15 to go and count and the Eagles have two timeouts left. I'm sure people are antsy but they're high school kids with, with the, the clock management. Out into the flat. Okay. Has some room to run. It's a first stopped, down. But it's a, a first down and that'll stop the clock. Kale Burns took a, a hard left. hit there. Um, he only got four but he got enough to stop the clock till the chains moved. There's one minute now the clock the clock started um, the chains are set. 50 seconds coming up here. The Eagles have two timeouts left. Carson up the throw. throw. Caught. It was caught. It is caught. What and that a is catch. a massive catch. At the 10-yard line. We'll see. I There's don't a know. flag here. A, a shift, an illegal motion on Bald Eagle. That's unfortunate. That penalty really hurts. So it's going to be first and 15. The Eagles will be back at their own 47. 40 seconds to go. So that nullified a, a beautiful, what would have been a 38-yard gain and what would have given the Eagles the ball at the Penns Valley 10. And this is where anticipation comes into play as a play caller and can your guy, can your quarterback work through his progression well? You know that they're sending a lot of guys and they're probably gonna bring be bringing both of the linebackers on this and they do. Can you replace them with a man? And they're gonna still throw long to Watkins, diving, he had couldn't him. get a hold of it. He had him, you I, know, we gotta, we gotta get the snaps a little better under control. Um, Carson's had to leave his feet twice in in the last six or seven snaps and it's and it's, that timing's just enough keith that stopped the clock it's second down and 15. the eagles have two timeouts left but there's only 27 seconds left in the half and anytime the, they're sending those linebackers like that it is you have to call the play where you just have your receiver fill that spot there's so much room for him to run over the middle the only problem is can nagel get it over the line without it getting batted down. Well, he's he's done fine with that. I mean, we had that opening that opening issue. Yeah. See, and there, and there I say, there's the wrestler. The wrestler makes short tackles, and he made another one. So third and, and long here for the Eagles. They're going to use one of their timeouts. On third and, and 15, that's an interesting timeout call. I'm not... The, the biggest key I see as we look toward the second half, assuming this one, we don't have drama on one side or the other that makes a score different in the next 19 seconds, that first possession of the second half is going to be enormous, Keith. Yes. The Eagles are going to have to make adjustments. Number one, not like you saw how the second half started here. When we went to the locker room seven weeks ago, BEA had a 20-7 to lead, and it disappeared in about four minutes yeah. in the third quarter. And... Tonight, we may have the opposite situation. Um, and you know you know what, as I think about that, and I'd have to think back, but did not, when Bald Eagle had that 20-7 to 7 lead, 
Bald Eagle also started the second half with the ball in the lead and got swallowed up right away. And then Penns Valley yes. just scored. Yeah, they did. And scored again. And we may have the exact flip of that where, where the Rams have a lead at halftime and the Eagles... The Eagles have to have to like be the be the defense that steps up and takes over. Yeah, they're gonna go with four wide here and a tight end. So an empty backfield here, and they're gonna go all six. Nagel rolling out. Can he find them? He's gonna get ahead. And he's gonna go out of bounds. Well that was fine. He did go out of bounds and he picked up a lot of yardage. He ran a long way, Keith. He got, uh, he got like, that was a that that was a third down, and the 15-year-old quarterback got up. He's he's okay, but he got 19 yards on a third and 21, and that that if anything was was one of the uh, better outcomes. Now it's fourth and fourth and two. Yep, they should be. So get a first down. Call a timeout. And, and take one to the end zone. That's. I think you got one last shot here. Yeah, and he may take it. And he's got him. And now we'll call a timeout. Now, you don't want to spike the ball now. You just call your last timeout. Kale exactly Burns what they're gonna do. from the 40 to the, to the 21, 19 yards on a fourth and two. The Eagles use their last timeout. So uh, we said the Rams never quit. The Eagles have never quit here either, Keith. And now the Eagles are in. Here's, here's a good question. Do you think the offense can get it done in six seconds, or do you put it in the hands of your kicker? Well, you know, I wondered about that. I know he's got the leg to get there. That would be a 38-yarder. Um, that's a good question. I think they're talking it over, and my guess is, my guess is that we're going to come out and we're going to try to do something to get to the end zone, although... Caden Burns is over there swinging that right leg all over the place. Yeah, and the, and the key to kicking in these situations is it's not necessarily getting a, a, a larger run up because, you know, they've been closing in on those kicks very well all night. It's about getting that leg speed up. It's almost like hitting a baseball. You want your bat speed to be fast, and it's the same way when yeah. you're kicking. You want to get that leg fully extended at contact, at the contact point with the ball. And uh, we'll see what they elect to do here. My guess would be to run their offense. Yeah, I, I think that's what you're going to see. And, yep, Nagel's still out there. And so a good, an, an entertaining first half. 35 points, and all of them were scored in the second quarter after a scoreless and they first got, quarter. They got Splain in one-on-one -on -one coverage. You may see him in the back of the end zone here. Again, a floating snap. Throws to Splain. Okay, that's that's okay. That ends the quarter with an interception. John Meyer, who's had a big first half on both sides of the ball, picks one off. It'll be 21 to 14, Penns Valley, as we go to the locker room. The Rams will get the ball first in the second half. Keith, I think at some point here we'll just we'll talk about this for a minute. The Rams all gather together down here to to leave to in unison. The Eagles are getting. So they just announced on the PA system that Bishop Guilfoyle, who is seven and three, is leading Richland fifteen to eight. A lot of people may not have been real surprised to hear that. So whoever wins this game tonight, Penns Valley or Bald Eagle, will go to Mansion Park. Now here's an interesting thought: if that game we just heard, if if Bishop Guilfoyle's lead holds up against Richland. No matter who goes from here, Penns Valley or Bald Eagle, they will be the higher seeded team. Mansion Park is Bishop Guilfoyle's home field, but the Bald Eagle Penns Valley winner will be the home team. So we will we will get whoever the winner of this game, these two center county rivals, should get the locker room that Bishop Guilfoyle is used to, to being in. And um, Keith, I think we'll go ahead and, and just let this let the camera on. We'll hang our headsets there if you're good. And we'll let the band and we'll be back a few minutes before the start of the second half. Again, District 6 AA action. It is Penns Valley 21, BEA 14. The Rams will get the ball first in the second half.
Okay, folks, um, second half will be getting underway momentarily. The Eagles um, kind of late coming back onto the field. Pence Valley came out two minutes ago. The Eagles are coming out uh, kind of in, in groups. Uh, Pence Valley came out uh, just as they came on the field, left the field, kind of keep that Iowa Hawkeye, Ohio State Buckeye method where they all maybe lock arms and stay together. <laughs> The Eagles are coming out in a long string. The clock shows two and a half minutes till we get underway in the second half. <coughs> and um, Keith, we were talking second half adjustments will be huge. And um, the Rams get the ball first to start the second half with a seven point lead. Yeah, I mean, the passing game has been going for the Eagles um, and they've been using the run game to set up their pass, which is, has been working well for them. I think the keys for the Eagles offensively is you have to have a guy cut to the inside to um, fill the gap that those linebackers are leaving. They're they're rushing six guy five six guys every time. Uh, Penn so Valley's on defense, and you have to have a guy slant across the field and fill that gap. I mean, that's an easy completion for him every time across the middle. I think that could be an addition. Uh, you know, having Carson go through the progression, see if that guy's open. Okay, he's not. Is a guy open deeper in the center? Is a guy going to be open on the sideline? Having uh, the foresight to see those certain things. Defensively, it's going to come down to, do the DNs keep containment? And can those outside linebackers step up early into that play uh, to limit the amount of sweeps uh, that are coming across here? And we just talked beforehand, every time that this Penns Valley team has had a big run. It's been on that outside sweep. They don't they don't want to run it up the middle. They want to go away from green. Um, and it's been working well for them so far. And offensively, the Rams have been mixing it up, uh, which has helped them a lot. They've been utilizing that throw into the in the flat, which uh, they've been using that to the to the uh, the short side of the field. So they're zipping that ball out there and getting it out there before anyone has time to step up and get in the face of those receivers. So it's it's going to be a challenge for the Eagles on both sides of the ball to adapt. But again, it's not anything that the Eagles can't do. It's not anything we haven't seen them do before. It's just about execution up until this point. Yeah, and in this um. Again, this opening possession of the second half is going to be very big. Yeah. The Eagles will kick off. Uh, Penns Valley, Keith, I was really impressed with Penns Valley's offensive line. Uh, I mean, you talked about the runs outside, the time that Romig had to throw. Penns Valley's receivers played a marvelous first half. All I mean, they hang on to the ball. They catch it in traffic. Yeah. Meyer, Brooks, um, obviously Ty Watson uh, caught a couple. In Hunter Lyons, and um, the the Penns Valley offensive line, though, you know those guys, Gavin Ryan and Rylan Loner and Hunter Stake and and the two Hesses, Landon and Scott, and again, I think they're brothers. I don't know. I'm <laughs> guessing one's in tenth grade, one's in twelfth. I imagine that's an interesting grocery bill, though. Yeah. If you got two offensive linemen, starting offensive linemen, sitting at the same table, that's got to be at least a carton of eggs every morning. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so the Eagles will be going right to left as we look at this to start the second half. Caden Burns will tee it up. And Penns Valley has, I'm looking for jersey numbers to confirm, I think uh, is that 87, Dane and Kerstetter, and 20 what? Is that Miles Brooks 21. 28 or is it 21? A There's line drive seven. kick. It is going to again go out of bounds. And again, we're trying to get that live ball thing, but Penns Valley is going to be set up where on the 35. So the Rams will start in good field position. Somebody in 24 clock minutes, unless we go to overtime, somebody on this field is going to Mansion Park next week. We just we just heard the PA announcer say that Bishop Gilfoyle. Now the f number four seed at seven and three is ahead of unbeaten four-time defending champion Richland, 25 to eight in the third quarter. So right now, if that one holds up, four-seeded BG is going to play either number two Penns Valley or number three BEA at Mansion Park. Roaming's in the gun. He gives to Miles Brooks, who gets away. Well, he 
got away momentarily and then he ended up on the ground. Chase Thompson, Wyatt Spackman, Cam Watkins. And uh, a big game. A big game here. The, the game was moved to tonight, to Thursday night, and, and trying to get ahead of that big rain coming tomorrow night. And the option was for Penns Valley, you can either have it uh, here tonight or we can have it uh, tomorrow night on the turf at Bald Eagle. And they said, nah, we want to have it here. <laughs> well, and they, they earned the right. They're the second-seeded exactly. team. You you know, if Bald Eagle beats Clearfield or Troy, this game's in, in Wingate tonight. But we didn't beat the, either of those teams, and we're not. Watson picks up. So let's uh, – and, and this crowd, the crowd's good. The facility's fine here, Keith. This is rural high school football. Central Pennsylvania, eight and two, or nine and two, Penns Valley, eight and three, Bold Eagle. <clears throat> We're a minute, a little over a minute into the second half. Here we go again, Keith. We're two plays in, and the Rams have third and long. They have third and eight at their own 37. Can the Eagle defense step up? I think this is probably about the sixth or seventh third down that they've been faced with here, and they've converted all of them over the middle crossing route. And that one was dropped by number 28. Well, that time the Eagles got pretty good pressure, and they got in the air, yeah. and he skied the ball a little bit. So with 10 and a half minutes to go, we're a minute and a half in, Penns Valley is going to set up to punt with the ball on their own 37. So their punter, and, and Romig's their punter, I believe. Yes, he is. Excellent athlete. Very, very impressed with them. And I was impressed with them seven weeks ago. And I think I, I met his dad. His dad was talking to Maverick after the game. I told him I didn't think they'd lose very many games the rest of the year. They did only lose one more. And um, they haven't looked back. And that kick is going to Kale, who gets. And that was a down. dangerous, dangerous football. It took an awkward bounce. And yeah. Kale went one way and Came back almost like a shortstop or second baseman trying to make a make Double a play that, uh, yeah. on something that takes a bad hop. Bald Eagle starts in their own 24. A big possession. They got a three and out to start the second half. And we'll see. They're going to go with that three wide here. That lineup that they've been using, that they've been most successful in the year tonight. Green in the backfield. As a side card and Nagel, he's to his right. They got a tight end to the right side of the formation. Green moves to the left side. 4-3 look here for the Rams. They're going to bring two. Green runs, and he's going to get a, maybe a yard or two on the play, bringing up second down. And our super scouts just, just chimed in and said that Richland has scored, Keith, so we have a 25-15 game in Johnstown tonight. Bishop Guilfoyle still ahead. We're Eagle fans, it doesn't matter. If the Eagles end up losing this, that game won't matter to us. The Penns Valley fans would say the same thing. Somebody here is going to see the winner of that game next week. Got Green, and he's going to get back to the line of scrimmage. Third and nine now for the Eagles. And you see what they're doing here. They're rushing those, uh, lineba those linebackers for uh, PV, but... They're also having those uh, those cornerbacks shade to the inside to try to take away that crossing route. And they're giving them a lot of room here. We'll see what they can do with it here. They're going to send yeah, that's all of them. Nagel gets away, throws, gets the pass off. And there was a flag. Is that a horse collar or something yeah, happened something bad happened over there. there? Is the Bald Eagle kid okay? I don't know. But uh, the official threw a flag. Carson got that ball off. And this is one of those odd moments when let's see what. Well, there, 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 there was a flag on the play, and it was way over on the Bald Eagle sideline. The only Bald Eagle guy over there was a the guy that had the ball. Yeah, you got to mix up the cadence for uh they're going to march of something off against Penns Valley here, Keith. And you got to change up the cadence here. I mean, they're bringing guys every time. It's just so in, 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 I guess that was the five-yarder, the inadvertent face mask. 
So we're going to have the Eagles get, get new life on that, at least for a play. It's going to be third and about seven at the 28, maybe? 27-yard line. They're going to say third and seven at the 27. Trey's back there with Carson. The clock's running. We're under nine minutes to go in the third quarter. There's that rush, and there's Ty Watson. Ty Watson blitzes, blows through the line, blows the play up, gets a sack. The Eagle punt team's going to come on the field. And it's difficult to deal with the rush like that whenever they're sending seven well, guys, six, seven, seven guys, yeah, seven guys every and, play. And you got that guy that's that's quick. And like I've said it. We knew when we. You know, Different sport, winter sport, but we knew he was a marvelous athlete, and he is. And Chase gets that ball high in the air to Miles Brooks at the Penns Valley 47, and he brings it about, gets about five yards on the return. He brought it upfield. Penns Valley will start in Bold Eagle territory. First down at the Eagle 48 with 7.54 to go in the third quarter. Yep, there's a flag on the play, though, deep in uh, Eagle territory there. Really? I see. It's on the still on the ground or no? Yeah. It's yeah, but did right at the uh, fifteen yard line there. So I wonder. I wonder what that call is. Something about the block, I would Why believe. Not? Flags all over the field. So you're going to have Bald Eagle re kick? Is that what they're? Holding on Bald Eagle. Wow. So now the Eagles are, are in. Or now so a hold so they don't make them re-kick. So now the, the Rams, the five-yard return that Miles Brooks had became a 15-yarder with that 10-yard penalty somehow. And... Um, Penns Valley has a first down at the Bald Eagle 38. They have a seven-point lead, and they have not trailed in this football game. There's not been a bigger margin than a seven-point margin, but every time there was a seven-point margin, the Rams had the lead. Eagles are looking for a stop here. They got to get in motion. Looking to throw. Well, he's got a lot of space and a lot of room, and, he, and a guy wide open. Miles Brooks was kind of all alone out there. Romick was roaming all alone out there on the left side. There he's a right-handed quarterback. He rolled left and, and he threw very well. So the Rams get 14 on that. Something's going to have to give here for the Eagles. They're going to, they're going to have to really have a couple big sparks, not just one, Keith. Is right to this point, they've overall been outplayed. And Romig gives the ball to Ty Watson. He bores ahead and gets maybe a yard. The Eagles have a guy hurt there? I don't know. The, it's the big pile, I believe. Big Kieran Jadun wrapped him up. Bald Eagle does have a player hurt, Keith, on the ground. So... see who that is and what they're working on. Officials timeout. So the officials send the Rams off to their sideline. Keith, what was interesting about that uh, that first Bald Eagle possession there that of this half that ended with a, a, a sack, the blitz, um, you know, it's kind of how the game started. And then, the, I mean, the same type of possession, a pretty yeah. ugly three and out. And then, and then they settled in, and after Penns Valley scored, Bald Eagle, both teams just kind of opened up. Yeah. Kind of a, but it's a high school football game. Yeah, I mean. In November. Again, the Eagles found a way to score there 
on those couple of drives they were had a couple more blockers up there Somebody's they up. found some guys on the sideline there in that cover one um so we'll see what they go with here they're trying to take away that uh inside slant route but i mean i think that that route on the sideline is, is still open because they don't have anyone deep i think you could run a deep crossing route and be open um it's it's just about how much blocking they can get up front and how much of a the pocket they can make for uh carson to throw with and once again the the, the impressive the Penns Valley skill players are very good, but the Penns Valley offensive line's been extremely impressive so far tonight. Romig looking to fake the Watson. We're not turning around, John Meyer. Look, looking at the ball. And Chase Thompson, Ryan, on excellent coverage there. Yeah, I mean, he's, Meyer. he's been right in the grill, but he's been doing a good job of not putting his hands in certain areas that would keep him, him from catching the ball, which would be um, pass interference. He's been doing a good job of keeping his hands under control, staying in front of his man, and making it real difficult for him to go up and get these catches. Well, here's a big one, Keith. Can can the Eagles stop a third and 10 at the at their own 24-yard line? And then, then what's even more interesting, if they do stop it, and there, it's going to be third down. It's going to be third down and 15. Hunter Lyons of the uh, of the Rams going to set up as a tight end on the right side. Left a little bit early, and you know he's had a great game tonight, Keith. Uh, yeah. He's he's that's an unfortunate mistake, a timing thing. 6:48 to go in the uh, third quarter. The clock's running. Penns Valley now with a third and 15. I don't like third and 15 with this team. <laughs> they have a lot of weapons. One of them wears number 11, and then he gets the ball to uh, any one of about five other suspects that, that do good things with it if you're a Penns Valley fan. They're bringing it in close. They throw over the middle. Oh, great and hit. And ball jarred by a massive hit over the middle. Set his guy up. And Hunter Lyons, was that Gavin Eckley on that? It was. Gavin yeah, Eckley broke that up, and now Penns Valley might, you know, this would be a long field goal attempt for, for a high school kicker. It would be a 46-yarder, a roughly, if they try it. And Ty Watson has that kind of leg. It would be, would be for a two-score game, but uh, I think they're going to go for it on fourth and 15. They are, but, I mean, that is, I mean, you got to have a little bit uh, more care for your receivers. You do not loft that thing over the and middle of the field. The Eagle defense didn't look like they were prepared for much. There's a rush. They had they had him by the jersey, and he's going to come up short. We're going to take over on downs. So Jackson Romig had a good run. So Green was there ready for him, but just couldn't stay on his feet. After he made the move, first down. So Mikey Snyder made that made that uh, tackle. Romig was moving. Um, and now the Eagles. Now look at this, Keith. The Eagles are under center. I think. Or are they going to break out of that and do something else? They're under center. Going with a little bit of a uh, another helmet loose. You have to pump these guys up. Uh, and that's a bald eagle helmet that yeah. came loose. Trying to get a We've had a lot of helmets fly here. off this year. Well, that was an interesting. I'm, okay. So they went under center. They went I see with, what they, they did with there. The, uh, no, they were they were going to set there. up. Well, they went with a they went with kind of like what sort of what like what Westmont Hilltop runs if you've seen them. It's a really, really odd setup. Maybe try to get some misdirection. Green with it. It gets positive yardage. He bores out to the 26. The clock's running five and a half to go. Still a 21-14 game. It's a one score game. A big play here, third and six for the Eagles. If you're the Eagles, you maybe go on two here, try to catch them out. Try to get yourself in a third and short situation rather than a third and 
not it's long, but and six, it's, eh? it's a bit much to deal with on third down. Now you're in more of a throwing situation here. They have some guys. Yeah, and they're... Penns Valley jumping around. Play clock down to five seconds. There's a snap back. Is that... Ball is tipped at the yeah. line, and that... It was tipped at the liner by a backer. It's a shortly downfield, but Bald Eagle's going to be forced to punt. Keith, it, yeah, Brungard of Penns Valley, a nice play on that. Got his hands up. He's roamed around and, and caused some problems in the middle there when Bald Eagle has tried to run. This is interesting. On fourth and six, just under five minutes to go. The Eagles are going to run out of time here. They're going to run out of time. We got a we got a play clock going to four seconds. They get that off with one. Chase gets a kickoff. Miles Brooks down there, and he gets loose. He gets sheds the first guy, and and if you miss him, it doesn't take much. And just that quick, he brings one back almost 20 yards, and the Rams, the cowbells you hear, they're starting to feel Mansion Park. 40 minutes to go in the and third quarter, Keith, and I'm looking here. Now they're at the ball, Eagle 40. Eagles and desperately need a big defensive play, a turnover, uh, anything, a fumble, uh, anything to, like, flip the field position, even a defensive score, and we've had a couple of them this year, and, they, and we've had that ball-stealing score. <laughs> yeah. 4-3 for the Eagles. They've been in it all night. Almost trips there on the motion. Yeah, and Romy keeps again coming to his right, and that's what you were talking, coming outside. What do we have there? That, that looks like maybe a hold. I don't know. I'm not entirely know. sure. That was a late flag. Two guys mixing it up down there. Is it a... I mean, the play was still going. Yeah, it's a Penns Valley. Yeah. So it was an illegal blindside block there. Might have been what might have been against one of those uh, linebackers coming across the field. So that there's the explanation. Okay. So now it's first and twenty-five for the Rams, and they're back at their own forty-five, and that's about. Roughly where Brooks fielded that punt before he had the nice return on it. Clock running, no. They're going to snap the ball with, with about four minutes to go. The play clock's running down on them. They're a little out of sync now. He gets a snap off. And he, Romick again has room to run, and they don't have contain on him. And, and uh, one eagle missed him, and another one did not miss him. He gets what, Keith, four? And again, that's those... Uh, DNs going too far downfield and they're allowing Romig to just run free in there. They were a three front, so it's difficult to get to the quarterback, but I mean these D tackles for or these O tackles for the uh for the Rams have been just doing a beautiful job of you know driving those guys out of the play. Well it's gonna take something special, something big. We've gotten down now to where Penns Valley had an opportunity, good opportunity on their last possession to really, really take uh, the lead solidly in this game. It would have been a two-score lead. The Eagles stopped them. There's a throw and another nice catch by Miles Brooks. Catches that pass in front of, yeah, Gavin Eckley was on him, but Brooks made a nice grab and now Penns Valley yeah, that big penalty hurt the Rams, but now the Rams are, are clear back to a third and nine and may again be in four down territory, but they've they've converted a lot of third and longs, Keith. Yes, they have. Right there, they had second and 21, and they got 12. If they get 12 on this one, they got another first down. And they're doing, Coach Tobias, expert on running clock and knowing how to use the clock. They're using all the play clock, or most of it. They're down to two and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. And they, they know that right now, there's that screen to Watson. He had room to go, and he is going to run over and bore through people. And 
He's a, he's also Keith a junior. So these two teams have a whole lot of 11s by their names and their grades on both sides of the ball, both jerseys. So yeah, that was his own defense. No one was covering the flat that time, and that guy ran wide open. And of course. Once he caught the ball, he had plenty of blocks up front to get him that first down. Well, he, he needed nine. He got 15. Romick's running loose over there. We had, oh, and a big hit. Can we make it? We got an interception. We did. We got a pickoff. We're going to have the ball deep in our own territory. The pressure, but where's the ball? So the ball's going to be Caden on McCullough. two or three yard line. Ca and now here's a, here's a real problem for us Keith that's great we got the interception but one mistake here and and we give up a safety and this is where you go back to that beef package that you had last time well you just gotta you gotta get out of there now we got the, the football game has a total of just under 14 minutes left in it and everyone's gonna bunch up here and they might try gotta to run get to positive outside. yardage and we do look at this wide open is he going to beat him? It's a track race to get to the goal line. 40, 30, being tracked down. 20, 10, and he'll fall at the 10-yard line. A near 90-yard run. Is that Gavin Eckley, the senior? I was worried about giving up a safety. Instead, instead Gavin Eckley, Gavin Eckley just went... What did he go, Keith? 88, that was 88, 88 yards. 88 yards. The guy yards. did the math for me. Woo! I didn't know where we were set up. And all of a sudden, with a minute and a half to go, the Eagles have a first and goal at the 10 of Penns Valley on an 88-yard run. Well, that, that changes momentum a little. Now let's see what the Eagles do. Unbelievable. High school football. Okay. So maybe a yard or two on that carry. Again, staying in that beef package. <laughs> and this is exactly how they got the win against Penns Valley last time. Some big breakaway runs, and that was exactly runs. what the doctor ordered. Yeah, you still have to make some hay on this on this possession. Yeah, you have to capitalize here. You have to put it in the end zone. What a football game that just turned into. Pushing the pile. Yeah, they are. And he's going to get a good amount of yardage that time. Working up to the five-yard five. line. But oh so close, Keith. It's going to be third and five. And the clock is counting with 15 seconds to go in the third quarter. I don't know if the Eagles are going to snap it here. They don't have to based on the play clock. I don't think they're going to. I think they're going to go to the fourth quarter. They're going to let it run out. It is going to run out. We're going to move to the other end of the field. Penns Valley 21, Bald Eagle 14, an 88 yard run by Gavin Eckley, the senior who's been with this team since he was a freshman. Wow. And this is turning out to be an even better game than we thought it would be. Well, here, Keith, unless something really bad would happen on this play, if you get any kind of positive yardage and not a touchdown, you got to be in four-down territory. Yeah, yeah. It's a high school game, and you don't know how many shots you're going to get to have a, a run like that. Um, wow. And see there, that all, that all was set up by the heavy pressure on Romig, the, the, by just a, a whisker, an underthrown ball that Caden McCullough picked off. Well, I was glad we got the ball. I wasn't real happy we got it on the two, and Gavin Eckley took, eight, took care of that 88 yards for me. Just when you and I seven weeks ago spent 15 minutes talking about overtime scenarios. <laughs> and... Uh, We'll see. The winner in 12 minutes, or if we go to overtime, a little over 12 minutes, but in when this one's over, somebody will have had a very, very good season ended, and 
somebody will extend their season to where we'd pro probably call it a great season and move into week 13 and move into Altoona's Mansion Park to play either Bishop Guilfoyle or Richland next week. The Rams look like they're going to stuff everything up in there, Keith, and I don't know what we have as an offensive set. It looks like the big guys are in the backfield. I think, is that Gavin, Trey, and... Green going to go in motion to the left side of the formation here. Same play as last time. And he still got positive yardage. He didn't score, but now it's going to be fourth and goal. So he gets a yard on the play, and... Now, they didn't get, he didn't get very much here. So they did give him one. And um, high drama, already a half a minute's gone in the fourth quarter. So they're going to get the play from the sideline here. You got 17 seconds left. Yeah, and the play so clock. Good amount of time. The play clock, they do have time, but it's now down to 10 seconds. Fourth and goal at the Penns Valley four after the Rams stopped that 88 yard run. That might have been the run that saved their season. He's got the corner. He is. They mark him short. short at the one yard line. Penns Valley holds. At the one yard line, the Rams make a huge play. So that 88 yard run flipped the field position. Penns Valley will take over on their own one. With 11.08 to play. And now, Keith, it's up to the Eagle defense to, to have maybe their most ferocious moment of the season. Yeah, I mean, if you're on the D-line, you have to get separation from your man. Get those arms out of your way. Get those hands out of your way. Make a swim move. Make a, a rip move. Make some kind of move to get into the backfield. And get back there and read the play well. That's the most important thing. A flag on the play, so that's going to be legal procedure. So I, they can't back up too much. That's probably a, what, a seven inch penalty. It's going to be half distance to the goal line here. 11.07 to go in a classic. There has been no scoring in the first quarter or the third quarter. The 21 to 14 Penns Valley lead was all accumulated <laughs> in the second quarter. And 28 of these 35 points came in the first two minutes and seven seconds of the second quarter. Roaming again up under center. Pushing the pile. Eagles, they don't want to push that pile too much. He's still pushing. I don't know where that was stopped or when it should have been. Is there a flag on the... I'm not sure. Yeah, there's a flag there's on the flag play. Penalty call against the Rams. There's a bold eagle player hurt. You can get help in the runner. Officials timeout. Tackle of the play by 52, Alexander Lefebvre. So Penns Valley is, is I guess, going to be back at their own one-yard line again. Apologize, Keith. I don't know who that is on the field. Not entirely sure. Uh, as far as the flag? No, I didn't see one. Oh yeah, he the, the the PA announcer said it was a flag on the Rams, but I didn't see what. I got a report from one of my uh, fellow students at CPI who attends Penns Valley. He said that uh, apparently Romig <laughs> said he wasn't feeling well before this game. I don't know if it was just the nerves or I don't know what it was. He said he wasn't feeling well, but despite that, he seems to be playing some great ball. Oh, he's fine. He's he's a, he's a, he's a competitor. So... We're going to get this going again. We have 10.57 to go now in the football game. Penns Valley with a, 
an odd first and 11 at their own one. So Eagle's going to try to be aggressive here. Roaming's in the gun now, right? Yes, he is. We're going to to the outside, and he'll be dragged down, I believe, at the line of scrimmage. No, he's going to get a couple yards on that play. Second down. How much did he get, Keith? It looks like he got about a yard that time. So he's out to the, well, they, they say second and nine. Yeah, so he got a yard or two. Out to the three-yard line now. Penns Valley on their own three. Just over 10 minutes to go in the game, and Rome again, the gun standing in the end zone. And he's coming wide, and he's got room out here to run. And he's loose. Ah. He got a first down. He got a first down. Penns Valley. I think he did. He did. He got a first down. They, they made all the plays tonight, Keith, when the, when the plays mattered. This game's not over. The Eagles need to get the football back. So we start again and try to get a three and out from this possession, even though it wouldn't be a true three and out. You can see a lot of this uh, production here from the Rams has been, <laughs> every time they get in a situation, they put it on uh, Romigan. There, there was a handoff up the middle. Good gain on the play, maybe about an eight yard gain. Like I was saying, they put it on the shoulders of Romig and he's been able to shoulder the load for the most part for this team throughout the season. Well, watching got and eight yards there, Keith. Followed over into this one. So the Rams now comfortably away from um, the shadow of their own goal line and can now go back to playing some Ram football and trying to run some clock with that seven point lead. Ty Watson coming this way. He's going to get a first down. He's not going to get on the end up on the ground. He's chewing yeah, I mean, up the and, yardage. And we see how different this game would have been had we maybe kicked a field goal uh, whenever we were down here close before in, on a fourth down situation. You know, and it's just. Well, it's a game of inches, a lot of different exactly. things. Penns Valley's executed better so far tonight. And when I say so far, we only have nine minutes left. They have a first down with 20 uh, at their own 28 with just over nine to go. But little things, the pick six that didn't yes. happen. And Penns Valley scored after that on that possession. You know, that flips his score to where it's 21-14 it's, it's the other way, and now Miles Brooks is running hard and boring through people. And he comes out of bounds, but I don't know where they're going to mark him out of bounds, but he got about seven. Maybe eight. By 32, Mike so Mikey Snyder finally wrapped him up. But the, the Penns Valley backs, anybody they have carrying the ball, they're running hard. They're playing hard. They're playing tough. Their offensive line. Um, I mean, their O line is standing up these Eagles right now, and they got to figure out a way to get low and shake some of these guys off. And if, and if these are the same offensive linemen, and I'm sure they probably are for the most part that they had seven weeks ago, and they were undefeated when we came in here. Um, they're, they played a much better football game overall tonight. Look at that gaping hole, and that might be the big one. They won't get Ty Watson. Maybe they will. We're running them down, and we did get him, but... So Gavin Eckley makes, a, a for now, a touchdown-saving tackle, but Penns Valley, they said... They said Nathan Fry, and if Nathan Fry made a tackle. So Watson broke that to the nine. Penns Valley has a first and goal, and they started this possession on their own six inch line. A lot of skilled players and a lot of underclassmen on this Penns Valley team, Keith. Mm -hmm. So 8.40 left to go here after the big run. Romig with it. So, eight and a half to go. He got, what did he get, Keith? He got to the six, maybe? So it's second and goal at the six. Even if they don't get in the end zone here, we know what they have for a kicker. Yes. And um, the, kicker, the kicker had a 55-yard runner. 
just a few minutes ago, and that uh, that put them down here. But they're six minutes away from completing a 99 and a half yard scoring drive. Romig delay give the Watson. He's going to bore through and keeps his legs moving. Runs over people. So Penns Valley is eight minutes and 27 seconds away from making their second trip ever and their first trip since 1991. 31 years since the Penns Valley Rams have played in a District 6 championship football game. That Penns Valley team went 10-0 during the regular season. This one went 8-2. And, two. and, and um, they're not there yet, but... He missed the extra point. So, <laughs> just when you say, Keith. So, there's eight and a half minutes to go. The Eagles trail 27 to 14. If the Eagles are to have any chance, this next possession probably needs to be quick and fruitful. Yeah, I mean, you'd expect them to go back to that uh, sideline uh, go route to one of their open guys and hoping they... Uh, Nagel can get enough air underneath it that he can kind of run underneath it and go grab it in a little bit of open space. Um, team, great, great teams die hard. Yes, exactly. And Richland, the four-time defending champion that was down 25 to eight a few minutes ago, has now cut Bishop Guilfoyle's lead to 25-22 in the fourth quarter. Richland is 10 and 0 this year, and five of their 10 wins have have come on the final possession of the game. And that is, those are special football teams that do that. Gavin and Kale will be back deep, both around the 10 yard line, and Ty Watson, who has overall, but well, I don't know, between him and him and Jackson Romig, uh, have probably done the most damage to the Eagles tonight. But but Miles Brooks and Hunter Lyons, um, they had a big <laughs> they had a big hand in the problem too. Eight and a half to go. Penns Valley 27, Bald Eagle 14. Squib kick. A squibber. There's a loose ball, and the official blows that play. I was going to say, nope, he was down. Said he was down. I didn't see, I didn't see the ball come out. I saw the, re the reaction of the Penns Valley players. So Nick Weibel, short return for the Eagles. Bald Eagle will have decent field position here, starting on their own 39, 8.20 to go. Both teams have all three timeouts left, Keith. Let's see what they, so they're going to go with. This is Short. an interesting We're setup. Go with the near trips to the right here. Quarterback in the pistol. I believe Green in the backfield. So what do we got here, Keith? So we're dealing with second and short. So we need to, he, and he got out of bounds. 8.14 to go. That's a good start on this drive. And a good route. Well, Keeping them honest. I mean, look at how much room. You hear the Penns Valley fans down here in front side. of us, Keith, say you, saying you guys got to stop them now because they know the Eagles are usually sometimes just one big play one moment away. That explosive offense, we need to see it now. So it'll be third and four. 8.09 to go in the game. So good job from Nagel to throw that one away. That's something that he struggled with throughout the year. Decided just to get rid of it that time. Third down from the 45 yard line. Third and four at the 45, and the Eagles, Keith, may be in four down territory, I, I think. But this is a manageable down, so let's see. A little bit of a floating snap. Oh! Tackle by 
fourth down for the Eagles. They're going to stay out there, it looks like. Yeah, I, I mean, I would say that's a that's a good move. You got under eight minutes to go. You got a fourth and eight, and you're at your own 41. You still have three timeouts left. Looks like they might go with that empty backfield here. Yeah. Expect a deep cross over the middle. That's exactly what they're going to go with. Throws it over the middle. Intercepted by uh, Broomgarter Kerstetter. And that's an interception, but that one's going to come back. A huge hit over the middle. And again, another blindside yeah, hit Penn, Penn from Valley's, these Rams. That, that was a big interception. The, the length of the return is going to be, a lot of it going to be nullified. Uh, a ferocious. So Penn's Valley is going to get the football, but not, not down in the field position it looked like they would have. So the Eagle defense is going to be back on the field with the mission to get a three and out or a quick turnover. Just over seven minutes to go. We saw, Keith, we saw 28 points in, in two minutes and seven seconds in the second quarter. Penalties called both against the Rams. Yeah, I mean, it's, you put yourself in a tough situation here if you're the Eagles. All legal accepted the illegal block in the back penalty after the interception. Now the Eagles are going to need to make a big defensive stop here. Keith, you know, it should be noted that Penns Valley and Bald Eagle split the cost of this broadcast tonight. Are you aware of that? Yes, I am. I Penns Valley folks uh, kind enough to ask us to say they, they apparently liked the broadcast that you did in week four. <laughs> um, and the Eagles won that one. There comes Watson again. And he's always going forward. Then you see, Keith, you see these guys down downfield, like Rylan uh, Loner and Hunter Lyons, you know, they're, they're blocking and they're keeping their legs moving downfield. Watson, he runs straight forward and he runs hard. And uh, six and a half minutes to go. He got nine yards on that. Penns Valley has a second and one. So the Rams are working the clock solidly now, Keith. That's going to take the, the game to well under six minutes left till they, um, and Wyatt Spackman wraps Watson up. But Watson has gotten stronger as this game went on. And you know, you watch, and, and here we have, we have a lot of two-sport athletes. You know, I mentioned about him being the great wrestler at Penns Valley. Yes, yeah. Clearfield, Clearfield's big back, their best back, is a wrestler of equal ability, and he got hurt and maybe lost for the yeah. year last week so or two weeks ago so you you don't uh the eagles will wrap him up cam watkins and nathan fry in on that tackle we have uh and that's a, that's an eight yard game and he's their backs are running hard keith but that offensive line Bald Eagle got the better of them seven weeks ago. The Eagles just didn't get the better of them tonight. Yeah, I mean, again, the Eagles' uh, D-line is, is big, but they're just not very uh, technical. I mean, this this Penns Valley squad, uh, in terms of the O-linemen, is a little bit smaller than you would like, but they're very technical, and, and they get right up in there, and they lock those guys in. And you're seeing it right here. They're getting right up in the grill those eagles and they're locking their arms in and that's what's helping them connect with these blocks you know if you're bigger you got longer arms you want to stretch those guys out you want to keep them out in front of you so that way you can able to you'll be able to rip put put their arms away get past them and make tackles up front which is what the eagles have been missing all night so thursday night football 
you know that's that's exactly where that uh, your bench press comes into play if you're a lineman, keeping that guy out in front of you and holding him there. Yeah, they aren't they aren't as big. I agree with you, but they're they've played very finesse oriented football tonight. They played it well and. Yeah, once you get up into those shoulder pads and you're playing on the line, I mean, it's it's very hard to disengage somebody when they're that close to you. Yeah. And that's exactly what they've been doing all night. See, this this game, the, the Penns Valley's running tonight, what we're seeing with that, <coughs> not real, not as big, but very agile offensive line, it was what we had, the one place we had trouble this year when you and I did, that we're down at Montoursville. Yes. So the same kind of thing. The Montoursville back that, that hurt us that night was bigger than this kid or bigger than these two kids, but he was shifty like that. Yeah. And um, just a tough night right now. Carry by 21, Ty Watson. Tackle by 45, Nathaniel Fry. And Nate Fry, a senior, has had a, uh, has had a pretty solid night, you know? The Eagles use their first time out. There's 327 to go. Penns Valley has a third and eight. <coughs> Excuse me now, a third and nine on the Eagle 36. The Rams have never trailed in this football game. Yeah, I mean, you could, I'm sure people are going to go back and look at this game, see what they could have done differently, things like that, once this one is over. But, I mean... Me personally, I'm a I'm a big, you know, put it in the hands of your kicker kind of guy. Um, <coughs> obviously, at the high school level, it, you know, you're not using a kicker who is a dedicated kicker. You know, you're using a place kicker. But um, you know, if we make two of those kicks that we're down here on those fourth downs, you know, this is looking like a very different game right now. Yeah. <coughs> <clears throat> yeah, that's uh <clears throat> man, man, Keith, it's uh might have to go to another stick of gum. <laughs> Three twenty seven left to go here in the fourth. A designed run, shakes off two, spins a third. Carried by number 11, Jackson Robe. Tackled by 45, Nathaniel Fry. Fourth now from the 31 So fourth and about five. <clears throat> yeah, the Eagles the Eagles have an opportunity here, Keith, to get the ball back. Good clock management by Penns Valley. <clears throat> Coach Tobias uses Penns Valley's first time out of the second half with only two minutes and 35 seconds to go. Keith, I, <clears throat> I bring this up, though. You know, today we had a great Veterans Day event at uh, the Bald Eagle High School. The whole school was there, kinder, the whole school district, kindergarten yep. through 12th grade. I don't know what that adds up to, probably 18 or 1,900 yeah. students. Um, probably 1,000 other guests from the public and from veterans, 3,000 people in the school. Mr. Tobias <clears throat> orchestrated a great event, but... What's striking, and I bring that up, yeah, we're going into Veterans Day holiday tomorrow, a lot of events already today, but <clears throat> I've mentioned this on a lot of Steve and I's broadcast. This is a high school football game. These two teams have made it to week 12. The vast majority of the state finished playing football two weeks ago. Mm -hmm. Penns Valley and Bald Eagle, neither of whom, neither of these teams were supposed to be District 6 semifinalists when you looked at the preseason polls and rankings, ended up playing here tonight in the semis. For a, for a trip to Mansion Park next week. And and we'll hold that thought here as Romig's going to take the snap and 
and keep it and come right and be stopped short and spun out of bounds and bald eagle. And Trey Green, again, a, gra a great play. Great players make great plays. That was a great play to get the ball back for the Eagles with 2.28 to go. But <clears throat> point I was making, Keith, these people in front of us, these teenagers, you know, 15, 16, 17, 18 years old, those those guys are our future leaders before before we know it. I mean, I'm old. You're not old yet. Yeah. So, you know, this is just a, a really somebody's not going to be happy when they lose here with a loss. Leave here with a loss tonight, and this one's not decided yet. But I'll just commend the game tonight. Penns Valley, uh, a, a, a big rush. Carson did well to get that ball off. But I think that's, that's that Gavin Ryan again. Um, he was a, he's been a, a handful in there, and I think Caleb caught for. Gavin Ryan played a, played a good game on both sides of the ball tonight for Penns Valley up front. Elliott Splain goes in motion. Kelly is playing in the official collide. It'll be third down and 10 for the Eagles with 2.20 to go in the football game. The Eagles still have two timeouts left. They're at their own 30-yard line. Third and ten here for the Eagles. Sends a man in motion. Empty backfield. Yeah, that's an incomplete pass. Penns Valley. Penns Valley just pinning their ears back. Yeah, and Jared Stover, another junior. You know, we talked Bald Eagle. Bald Eagle has a very, very solid junior class. We know we had really good senior leaders this year. They brought us back from an 0-2 start. And they got us 10 weeks later, we're in the District 6 semifinals. But both of these programs, these teams you see in front, you're going to see a lot of these same guys going nose to nose next year in an Iron Bell game in the Laurel Highlands Conference. And Bald Eagle has a fourth and ten. And who's going to call a timeout? The Eagles? No, Penns Valley. Penns Valley's hmm. going to call a timeout here. So Penns Valley will have one timeout left. The Eagles have two. But if the Eagles cannot convert a fourth and ten in their own 30 here, it's looking like it's going to be over. Keith, we said this is meeting 35. They first met in 1957. And then for a lot of years they didn't play because there's been a lot more years than 35 years between mm -hmm. 1957 and now. Bald Eagle had won the last two meetings. They had won 21 they were 21 and 13 all time in the series against Penns Valley. <clears throat> it's always for the Iron Bell. And the yeah. Iron Bell's in Wingate, except for tonight. Tonight, this one was bigger than the Bell. Bigger than the Bell. Yeah, I mean. And, and both of them made a great statement in the last year of the Mountain League. I keep going back to where the preseason. 15 teams in District 6 AA, and Western Pennsylvania football had Bald Eagle 7th and Penns Valley 9th. And they end up number two and number three in the seeds playing here in the semifinals tonight. Eagles looking for a touchdown pass here. Yes, they are. He caught that, if he caught that ball, he went past the stick. Pass complete, number two, Cale Burns. Cale Burns keeps the Eagles season alive with about a 12-yard completion. On a Carson hit him for 13 yards, a 13-yard gain on a fourth and 10. The clock just hit two minutes. The Eagles are down by 13, but they still have the football. Eagles got a little bit of pep in their step here. Throw. That'll stop the clock, so nothing hurt on that one. It stops the clock, Keith. 
it's just as you said, one big play, and then, and then you hope you have like the greatest onside kick in history, <laughs> and that'll that'll add the pep into the special K Keith Green step. <laughs> Again, just a real tough situation here for Nagel. He's been getting rushed all night. Um, they've been sending six, seven guys at him. Now they're lined up in a three front, but they got those three linebackers still there. And it's more looking like a four front almost. They're going to send four. Trying to get to him. Away. Nagel sidearms it, throws. He'll be dragged another, down he got from another behind, first he, down, another so first that'll down. momentarily stop the clock with a minute 40 to go. So the Eagles, the Eagles, so we start, did we spike the ball? No, the clock hasn't started. It, it, has, now it has now a minute 40 to go. Car Carson acted like he was going to spike it. Instead, he pulls up and throws. That's another first down. And the, the Eagles, Eagles are on the move with a minute and a half to go. They're going to fight till the end. you got to be proud of that, Keith. They're going to fight to the end. I don't know what that gained, but Penns Valley just used their last time out with 127 to go. The Eagles have a first down at the... At the and Penns Valley caught off guard there. Perfectly yeah. fine. I mean, the clock was running. And Car they, they didn't have the... the, the they uh, tried the to sneak a touchdown. Yeah. And they yeah, tried, they tried to, sneak to sneak a touchdown in there, in there Keith. And they did, they did sneak in a... 21-yard completion. They have two timeouts left. A really quick score here, and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, we might have one last minute of drama Woo. in Spring Mills. High school football. The future leaders. They're wearing blue and gold, and they're wearing navy blue and white. The most memorable Penns Valley Bald Eagle game in history, Keith. <laughs> it wasn't for the bell. And going forward, there may be a few more of these as we both join the Laurel Highlands next year. The playoff format next year will be the same. The top eight get in out of 15. The Eagles are set up. They're on the Ram 23. They have a first down. Cover two here. We're going to probably have to use a timeout. Carson, that was a designed run, and we do we did call a timeout. So, 117 to go. What a battle, Keith! Whew. Eagles definitely are not what giving a up a battle. Yet. Keith, you're Keith and I are holding out hope. The Eagles are on the uh, <laughs> Penns Valley 17 with a second and four, a minute 17 to go. You know, there's always a chance. Always I, a chance. I have all, I've seen crazier things. Oh, we have. Yes. We have. I mean, two years ago, when last year, actually, when Bald Eagle beat Penns Valley 14 nothing at Wingate, the 14 points came in a, in the second quarter in a span of 20 seconds. Yes. 14 points. And there was no scoring for either team the rest of the game. <laughs> so high school football, as, as Steve Miller and I have said many times, is a is crazy it? sport. Yes. The Rams, you got two excellent high school football teams, rural, class AA, small high school football. Pennsylvania teams and um, we love that Carson's back he had time he's gonna have to get rid of it and he does and whoever hauled that in got out of bounds was that cam steps out of bounds I believe that was cam yeah the the, the height of that receiver that's who I guess that was and he got about three so now with the clock stopped at 112 to go it's gonna be third and maybe one Third and one for the Eagles at about the Penns Valley, or they have third and two on the board, but it's on the 15-yard line. They're third and one now on the 15. The Eagles have one timeout left, and you have to use it when you have to use it. Carson's looking, throws hard, low up, and that will probably call him Brungart. In a valiant 
a valiant effort at the end by the Eagles. Ended with a, there are no flags. Ended with a Colin Broongart. Uh, Penns Valley Senior gets a big, a big interception, a pick six. Penns Valley goes up 33 to 14. So with 56 seconds left, score line 33 to 14. They're, Penns Valley going to try to tack on an extra one here. And the Eagles never quit, Keith. They never no, quit. No, they didn't. Trey, ma Trey made the tackle on fourth and four to give the, give them the ball back with 220 to go, and they got down in the red zone. And that kind of stuff happens. You know, you, you, you have third and one, but you got to go for the end zone with a minute left. You can't do that. Watson, a, his kick is good. Penns Valley's up 34 to 14. So a... So barring the likes of something I now will say I've never seen. <laughs> the biggest, the Keith, the biggest Bald Eagle comeback win in history from a deficit in history was a comeback from a 19-point deficit in the fourth quarter with an undefeated 1985 season on the line in week 10. <laughs> Down 26 to 7, the Eagles came back and beat Lewistown 27-26. Doug Womer, you know him in Howard, yeah. he led them back. To this day, that that comeback from a 19-point deficit is Bald Eagles' biggest comeback ever to win a football game. Yes. They came back from a 28-point deficit to end in a tie at Huntington once upon a time. So, and coming back from that 19-point deficit, they did it over 10 minutes, not over 56 Here's seconds. Valley fans, you are not allowed to take the field at the end. So, so the the Ram fans were just warned that they're not allowed to take the field. So we won't have a repeat of Tennessee where they had to pay a hundred thousand dollars to replace the goalpost they tore out when they beat Alabama, right, yeah, Keith? Yes. We don't need that in Spring Mills. We got a good return here. That's Gavin Burns, I think, right? Good run back. He's had a couple good run backs a couple times that he's been able to get his hands on the ball this year. Diego offense comes on the field with 51 seconds to go. But a hard fought game, Keith. We saw a scoreless first quarter. And again, we saw 28 points in a tie game in two minutes and seven seconds of the second quarter. The Eagles are going to continue to continue to air it out and gun it. Pass complete to number 19, Cameron Watkins. So let's see. So Steve Miller, we, we missed you tonight, buddy. And uh, Maverick, we missed you too over here. 42 seconds to go. The Eagles are going to play this out to the end. Kale Burns, a nice catch and run. There's half a minute to go. The Eagles call a timeout. That'll be their last one. Timeout called by Baldy Galeria, their third and final timeout of the half. So I'm looking here, Keith. I haven't, our Super Scout hasn't given us an update in quite a while, and that may be because um, So just want to we want to look at something and point something out. If you got a result in that Richland game, Bishop Gil is that a final? Yep. So Bishop Gilfoyle. Here's an interesting thing. Penns Valley is going to win this football game. I mean, there's no way they're not going to. It's it's 34 to 14. 
congratulations to the Rams first trip to the district finals in in 31 years now here's the thing they're going to go to Mansion Park District 6 website says that game that championship game will be next Friday night seven o'clock okay Penns Valley's a second seed and right now we have an eagle still on the move is that cam and I you know there's a dangerous thing you have you said about roaming there's your there's a starting quarterback going to the district finals in on a tackle with a 20 point lead late I don't like that yeah. but this game's over they're gonna shake hands uh, the Eagles are gonna get one more snap maybe and then shake hands no I don't think he's gonna snap it yeah he is he's gonna snap it and heave one more And Penns Valley, Penns Valley has, has won the District 6 AA semifinals over BEA 34 to 14. We'll, I'll say plenty. Whenever I get internet again at home, I'll send a newsletter out. I, don't, I lost internet for three days. Bald Eagle finishes a fine eight and four season. 14 times in 70 years we've had, we've had 14 wins. This was one of them. Penns Valley will go to Altoona next week and they will play Bishop Guilfoyle. Bishop Guilfoyle knocked off undefeated and four-time defending district champion Richland 32 to 22 tonight. Penns Valley will be on Bishop McCor or Bishop Guilfoyle's home field at Mansion Park, but the Rams, by the way the protocol is, the Rams should be the home home team. Yes. They're the higher seed. So they're going to they're going to go see Bishop Guilfoyle. They're going to use Bishop Guilfoyle's usually locker room. And Bishop Guilfoyle. Guilfoyle. So congratulations to Coach Tobias and Penns Valley. The Penns Valley kids outplayed Bald Eagle tonight, Keith. you got to give them credit. They never yeah. trailed. Um, and we said it's tough to beat a good team twice. The Eagles had a fine season. I'll, I'll come in before we sign off, Keith. I want to. I don't want to miss any of them. You know, we talked. We were this Bald Eagle team was 0 and 2, 0 and 2, and people said, "What's wrong?" They turned around then. They they clobber Belfont. Then uh, then they come here and they win the Iron Bell. So they win the Curtain Bowl and the Iron Bell. They go to Montoursville. We're recapping the season quick here. They go to Montoursville. They lost to a good team. They're down. They're two and three. We'll talk about talk about seniors and senior leaders. In that chaos after after the uh, the, the crowd, the way you had to exit down there at Montoursville it was kind of weird behind yeah. the bleachers. I got a chance as I was trying to get to my vehicle to talk to your brother, Trey Green, Kieran Jadun, and Caden McCullough, three of the seniors, and. You know, they were two and three, and they knew that one week later we were going to see undefeated Tyrone. And Kieran Jadun said, our season will be okay. He didn't even have his helmet off. He just said, Montoursville was good tonight. We'll be okay. Trey told me, right. we'll beat Tyrone. We'll turn the season around. Yeah. That's exactly the senior leadership on this team. You know, Gavin Eckley, the, the Trey Greens, the Kieran Jaduns, the Mikey Snyders, the Chase Thompsons. The Caden McCullough's the seniors that have been on the field a lot in the last three years turned an 0-2 season that, you know, their high school kids, their high school players, they they turned their leadership, and we talked about leadership today on as a Veterans Day celebration, they turned this season around with a lot of good underclassmen talent on the team helping. Mm -hmm. The senior leadership, no, no substitution for it. Those guys won eight games in ten weeks. And um, last year, those guys that are graduating now, think about this senior class, Keith. The senior class, with the exception, I know Gavin, Gavin was up on the varsity as a freshman. This Bald Eagle senior class, as 10th graders, they come up all excited to play varsity football, and they see a horrible example of leadership in how we handled COVID. Not at Bald Eagle, but across the country. Yeah. So they, they kind of had their, their sophomore varsity sports season <laughs> stolen from them. Then, then last year, they're, they're juniors, and guess what? A nine-win season. We've only had nine of them in 70 years, and this year an eight-win season. So, you know, you, as Coach Stoker said, and that's how we'll sign off, when you go to the playoffs in Pennsylvania, it's not a sport where, the, where the, you lose one night and you get to come back and play. Yeah. It's football. It's one and done. Yep. When you get to the postseason, it's sweet. 
unless you win the state title, it becomes bitter. It's bitter sweet because once you're in the postseason, unless you win the state championship, your season will end with a loss. Yep. That's what happened here to Bald Eagle two weeks into the postseason. Congratulations yep. to Coach Nagel and a great bunch of kids and parents and fans. Um, 2000 or 2022 was a success in my view. Congratulations to Penns Valley for winning this game tonight. And I'm going to say it now, pound Bishop Guilfoyle next week at Mansion Park. All, uh, Eagle Nation will be rooting for the Rams. Um, I'm rooting for them. Yeah, I mean, again, like you said, it's high school football. There's ups, there's downs. And, you know, the saying is, it's easy to be a fan when you're up. It's hard to be a fan when you're down. And I have nothing but respect for the real diehard uh, Ram fans out there because they've had a lot of down recently in the couple recent years. And, you know, this is a is a really good moment for them. Um, you know, the e on the Eagles side, like you said, it's it's hard in the playoffs because your season is, is – always going to end with a loss unless you're that one team that makes it to the very end and um, you know it's going to be hard for those seniors to walk off the football field and you know majority to to <laughs> an overwhelming majority of all those seniors are going to play their last snap of football and that and that's a hard pill to swallow I think there there might be one maybe two guys on that on that squad that go on to play to the on the next level um yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's it's a tough pill to swallow whenever, you know, you finish high school sports in any sport, that is. Um, again, like you said, we'll be rooting for the Rams next week. From myself, from Todd, from our anonymous uh, camera person, um, <laughs> thank you to all of the fans out there that watched the uh, broadcast. Again, thank you to all of our sponsors. Thank you to... Uh, Penns Valley, who actually split this game with us. They went half season on us for this because they liked the uh, the broadcast so much. Um, until next season, be safe. Have a good night.